Hello, friends. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Fort Worth or Roots. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by GW District. Go to shopgwdistrict.com to find over 110 black-owned businesses listing their merchandise. You can also find them at your app store. Our guests today are returning for the second time. These are the owners of Hawk Therapy right here in the Austin area. This is a long one. So listen to what you want to as long as you, as much time as you can commit to it and then uh, come back when you get a chance. <laughs> I just couldn't find a good place to cut material out. Love these guys. Hope you all are having a good day. And uh, thank you for being here. And let's give it up for Andrew and Jana Green. Let's start the show. Like, hey, we could all do yoga. Like, come in your yoga shorts, yeah, whatever. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, where do you do you do it here in the living room? Yeah, 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 yeah. I just moved the the coffee table a little bit, and me and Luigi ended up doing yoga. He came to visit, and all the girls were so in love with him. But um, it was really, really cool. And I, um, they so going back to what I was saying, uh, they had a practice during the uh, the yoga uh, practice, whatever it is. Um, but you control your breathing through holding certain nostrils closed huh. so like if you go like like hang loose you know you you hold on one side and you breathe through this nostril and then once you breathe in you hold that and then you breathe out through the other nostril and then you start breathing in through this nostril and then you hold it and then you breathe out through that nostril <laughs> apparently that's actually helpful for not just regulating breathing but it uh-huh. helps with digestion really mm-hmm. you know right off the cuff i would be like that's ridiculous but i've i've heard like professionals that yes. that that's their field is like understanding mm-hmm. breathing and intentional breathing and all that mm-hmm. and it's wild the, it's really the cool. studies that they've actually done on that mm-hmm. that show some measurable changes in people's health and performance they they did a whole group of athletes yeah. where i can't remember how they did this anyway yeah. a study where they they demonstrated with these athletes that they were something like 10% better at at whatever they were doing. Their performance was 10% improved by just focusing on breathing for maybe 15 minutes before an exercise or Mm -hmm. something like that. Absolutely. And the biggest takeaway that I got from that uh, uh, episode of a podcast that I listened to where they were talking to this expert uh, was that you need to be breathing through your nose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Specifically, yeah. People that breathe through their mouth are like, they're they're damaging themselves apparently. So in your uh, nasal cavity, you have basically a, a, a air filter. It's of a sorts. whole thing, yeah. But there's there's they've done a lot of studies that find there's a really good Psychology Today article that's titled "Your Breath Is Your Remote Control for Your Mind." Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and what they found is breathing. How you breathe is such a really sets the pace for how everything else in your body is functioning. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't realize this, but you know, if you're if you're anxious and you're breathing very deeply, your body basically is sending the message to your brain, "Hey, I'm breathing slowly and deeply. There's nothing to worry about." Yeah. And your breath can override your brain. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Conversely, a lot of people that we work with, they'll say, "You know, I'm anxious all the time, and I'm always tired all the time, and mm-hmm. I don't know why." Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, when we're kind of stressed and we're kind of you know, future focused all the time. A lot of people don't realize it, but they spend the majority of their day not breathing or breathing very shallowly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you're not breathing or you're breathing very shallowly, obviously your brain isn't getting a whole lot of oxygen. Yeah. Yeah, Or less than it should. Less than it should. And when your brain knows it's missing something that it needs, that creates anxiety. When you're not getting enough oxygen, that makes you tired. So, Mm -hmm. so it's interesting just the very, very, very far reaching deleterious effects of not having uh, well managed breathing patterns Absolutely. yeah so there was somebody that i saw so i i've done physical therapy a little bit um mm-hmm. and so f- uh in any specific field or um it, it was a, a lot of muscle tension that i was going through for a little while and so i was seeing somebody for a little bit and i remember going into one of our sessions and there were post-its all over the place with like little <laughs> highlighter dots all over mm-hmm. and i was like what's that for and she's like ah oh, it's just to remind me to breathe and i was like oh 
And mm. so she was telling me, she's like, yeah, like, I mean, and she's so knowledgeable about this, but like, she was telling me that like diaphragmatic breathing is so helpful because you think about the muscles that are tense throughout your day. Like when you're working out, like you hold your breath, when you're right. doing a push up, you're holding your breath. You're, you're doing, you're holding your breath in so many different activities that you don't even realize that you're doing it. It's kind of an yeah. innate thing. So, um, she was telling me, she was like, yeah, like uh, try putting post-its like in your area to where wherever you look, if you see it, that's your reminder to breathe. Right. And I tried that for like a couple of weeks mm -hmm. in my office. All my clients asked and I was like, hey, do it too, whatever, um, which was really helpful. But um, doing that, I was able to really notice how often I hold my breath. And, yeah. it's, and it's very often, especially yeah. no matter like... I mean, it's, it's especially in situations where like I have to move from one thing to the other, to the other, to right. the other, which is often how like, you know, our, our society really is. It's mm -hmm. like, hurry up, go, 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 go. Well, I'm sitting here like, as we're talking about it and I'm focusing Being aware, on my breathing, yeah. right? and But it, free, breathing from your belly, like from your belly is like. How is, is that my belly? <laughs> Yeah, like the fact that if you're asking yourself that, then you're probably holding your breath a whole lot. Yeah. Think about it. Well, yeah. I, I did, I started practicing it after I heard that podcast. Like okay, just, good. just breathing through my nose, which I mm -hmm. figured out is not really a difficult thing for me because I think mm -hmm. I do it anyway. I'm not a mouth breather. <laughs> <laughs> sure. But <laughs> you don't drag your knuckles either. <laughs> they, okay, so that was another interesting thing. There was a correlation between IQ and whether or not that person was a mouth breather oh wait and, really yeah and then oh. I, I think they also did like a control group where they take the same people and give them a test mm -hmm. and then give them the same test later or equivalent sure and then tell them hey only breathe through your nose and they <laughs> did like 10 percent better or something like that Interesting. and huh. I'm, I'm probably way off here but there was something like that where they yeah. they were able to make a measurable like correlation uh -huh. between iq and mouth breathing <laughs> That's very, I mean, they don't, they don't, I mean, mouth breathers isn't an insult for no reason. Yeah. Right, right. That, I mean, that is a thing. But even then, like, I wouldn't be surprised by that. Like, our bodies have so many different interesting functions. And it's like, you know, uh, uh, from what I remember even, like, so during a time I was really into, like, meditation mm -hmm. with, like, a few of my friends. And, I mean, really, really great people that I worked with uh, down South Potter Island. And, um uh, I got into just kind of just being aware of my body and yeah. it's interesting like doing meditation for like 10 to 15 minutes is like taking a nap for 30 minutes yeah it's like it's like a power nap a cat nap so it's like to give your body the opportunity to just kind of disconnect from all of these different things that demand your attention yeah. and just having that space just for yourself not to move not to do anything yeah I think it's an interesting exercise. I think we talked a little bit about, I know we did. We talked about meditation last time. And then yeah. immediately after that, I started like trying to set time aside in the mornings just to like sit there and mm -hmm. just do that. Just, just chill, just wait, mm -hmm. give myself time to wake up, kind of think about the day. Mm -hmm. You know, not, I, it, I think the first couple of days I was like, I'm going to write notes down. And I did that. Mm -hmm. And then like by day three or whatever, it was like, I'm just, I don't need that. I don't mm -hmm. need, I don't need to document this. No, you just <laughs> so, need to be, exist, yeah. What, yeah. What, what, we're, what we're really finding is just the, the, the value in really able, really being able to do nothing. Something mm -hmm. that, that we've, th since we last visited, there's just been a couple of things that we've uh, been exposed to that have kind of changed how we think about things, mm -hmm. you know, from a therapy, from a clinical perspective, not the least of which being the idea of being a human being versus a human doing. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. we're, we're all we're all focused on what we're doing and what we're not doing, but very few of us are focused on what it's like to just be. Yeah. Right. Um, and so this, this was interesting. Uh, there was a there was a study that I was reading, this was maybe a week ago or so, maybe two weeks ago, but they were, um, it, it had to do with uh, uh, depression and uh, anxiety and, and trauma. And basically the, the study was this guy took a whole bunch of flies and he introduced the flies to female mates. And as soon as they met, he basically would, would kill the, the female fly. Oh my God. Yeah. Horrible. Horrible. I mean, I, I don't real, like real flies. Intense. But I know. Well, this is, so, so <laughs> the they got real dark real quick. So yeah. this it took a real sharp turn. It's okay. It's, mm. this, has, this has a happy-ish ending. So, oh, okay. so, so, so they took, so they, so all of these flies basically are traumatized. Right. And so they took half of the flies and they just said, mm. Hey, you know, 
go go you know they, they just put them back into their natural habitat and just said just watch what happened and then the other half of the flies they put them in a room where uh there was no light and there was no sound in like other words a pack of cigarettes in the middle or something <laughs> i don't i don't know <laughs> if there flies? were fly cigarettes i don't know, I don't know if <laughs> fly tobacco fly size cigarettes <laughs> but they, they, it was it Be was like a, itty bitty. it was effectively effectively a sensory deprivation chamber mm, for flies yes <laughs> so yes. so they, the, the study only ran for two or three uh-huh. days but the flies that you know experienced the trauma and then just were just tried to continue living life. Uh, mm. Many of them weren't really flying; they weren't really interacting. Some of the flies just kind of died themselves, ostensibly from depression. Mm. And then the flies that were uh, in a silent, pitch black room for two or three days, when they came out, they were all returned to normal functioning. They were all flying, buzzing around. Some of the flies even tried mating with new female flies. Mm-hmm. And so the moral of the um, the study was that for some reason exposure to light affects how we process things really just exposure to information light sound tactile stimulation so what we found is if you're awake and you eliminate all stimuli for some reason that allows your brain the ability to process all the stuff that is backlogged Mm -hmm. because as you and i are talking right now as you're looking at this room right now your brain is processing everything that's going on right now this wall is white jana has dark hair when when (laughs) when your brain stops when when your brain has nothing to process in the now it gives it a chance to process all the backlog all the backlog yeah. stuff and for mm-hmm. some reason we just found that i mean meditation is great because you're not re- there's very little stimuli but it's like what happens if i take it a step further and i remove literally light mm-hmm. and for mm-hmm. some reason that that just made a very profound effect and after just two or three days mm-hmm. You know, granted, this study was done on insects in Japan, but I have so many questions also. But yeah, for another time, <laughs> it's, it, there, there's, well, there's just a lot. There's a lot. Unpair, there's a, de- the, there's yeah. a lot of depth there because I mean, it, it it then leans into like sensory deprivation and not just from a light sense, but yeah. like like if you're in a space like of course like sensory deprivation chambers where you're just kind of floating you are given this opportunity to just have clarity you're not being distracted by anything i've tried it once and the guy whenever i left he was like how was it what did you think i mean i I can't remember i think i was in there for an hour maybe Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. float tank yeah and i was like i don't know i didn't i don't think it did anything for me and he was like oh well you know, you gotta you gotta try it a few more times, and I'm like, you know, a eh. hundred dollars <laughs> to lay mm-hmm. in a bathtub, mm-hmm. and you're telling me I gotta like practice? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know, man. I, they didn't give you any direction as far as like what they wanted you to particularly I, I, do. I think he did. I think he told me like a few steps to okay. to like get me started, but it just I don't know. Maybe I was not nearly as disengaged as I thought or mm. was trying maybe to be. Maybe you just, maybe, well, if this was your first time, I would imagine that it would probably be hard to just feel vulnerable like that to be in this kind of space. It was like, the <laughs> the reason I went there, I, I, there was some really bad shit going on. Mm-hmm. And I I thought, I got to have some kind of way of fixing this. Let mm-hmm. me let me try that out. Because mm-hmm. I just, I, I was not productive, like where my head was at. So, sure, sure. so I tried that out and I was so disappointed. <laughs> Oh. oh no! <laughs> I left there kind of pissed off. Oh I'm like, no! That, I don't feel better, but maybe it's just uh, that there was so much going on mm-hmm. that it didn't matter what I did. You know, mm-hmm. one trip to the deprivation tank wasn't going to do anything. You know, sure. right. well, well, so. and only doing it. For, I mean, I've done sen- sensory de- uh, sensory deprivation tanks before, and, I, and yeah, they are they are an hour. And I remember doing them before I was a therapist and had no idea what I was doing. I was right. just rather mm. bored. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and just wondering how much time was passing. Yeah, thinking um, about the clock the whole maybe, time. Maybe, maybe yeah. having like a sort of intention. Like, I, so where I used to work, um, I used to work in South Padre, uh-huh. and one of my like very, very, very amazing girlfriends um, who ran the the neuroplasticity center there. Her name's Laura. Mm-hmm. Um, she had a sensory deprivation chamber there. And it was a modified version, of course, because it wasn't in a tub in my bikini or anything like that. Like right. I was, I was like, it, I was, it was like a bed. It was mm-hmm. like kind of like a salt water bed. It was very, very interesting, but it really did shut out all light. And mm-hmm. so you just had like nothing distracting you but yourself. And so you're just kind of sitting there with yourself. And, you know, she guided me in the way that of like, you know what, try to have some sort of intention. Like if you have a question, if there's something on your mind, like 
think about it, but allow yourself to just be open to whatever comes forth. I'm like, yeah. okay. And so I did that and I like, it was, it was for about an hour. I remember. Um, but I, I didn't feel like it was an hour. It felt like it was like maybe 20 minutes. Yeah. And I just felt like I had so much clarity about so many things that were kind of like plaguing me with anxiety. Cause I had struggled mm. with anxiety pretty heavily during that time. Yeah. Um, but I got out of there and I was like, huh, I was like, okay, interesting. So like, I just felt a little more aware and a little less distracted by everything around me. And so it helped me feel capable to make certain decisions that maybe I was maybe too afraid or too like uncomfortable to make or what have you. But like during that time, it's like, I, it was really cool because like I went to it with the intention of, I don't have to meet anybody's needs right now. I don't have any responsibilities to anybody else. I don't have to be anywhere at a certain time. Like all I, all it is, is just me. That's it. Me and my thoughts and my ability to just give my body what it needs in that moment. And I just kind of stood there and it felt like it felt floaty kind of like, it's so weird. It's, it's, it was really, really cool. It was a beautiful experience, but I I do remember talking about feeling floaty. I do remember a few times whenever I was able to like really let go and, and stop worrying about the clock. I lost perception of like up and down. Oh, at, at some point, your in, mm. your internal gyroscope. Yeah, yeah. It was completely is that off. what it's called? <laughs> yeah, actually, humans have really bad internal gyroscopes. That's mm. why a lot of plane crashes and fog happen because people's planes go upside right. down and, and they don't they don't notice it. Spatial disorientation or something like that. Mm. That that sounds fancy I, enough to I me. I think that's it. I mm. I, I went through a, a school and wasted a bunch of money and and walked away with nothing. And I think that's one of the things we talked about was spatial disorientation. Mm. Well, so you didn't walk away with nothing. You walked away with a bit of knowledge. Yeah, about spatial I, got a, I got a term that came in handy here. Yeah. <laughs> I was impressed. I was impressed. <laughs> well, and I don't remember if that's right, but yeah. yeah, it's you know what what happens is you got somebody that's uh, flying an airplane and their IFR uh, just operating completely off the gauges they look out their window and it's dark or cloudy or whatever and then they just before you know it start slipping and they're not watching their attitude or Mm -hmm. whatever and before you know it it, they get into an uh, uncontrollable spin Mm -hmm. and it's actually very easy to correct it but you gotta you gotta have it practiced Mm -hmm. because it's one of those things that if it's not like uh instinctive mm-hmm. you might not do it because you you hit that panic mode oh now, right, for, right for a panic or for a pilot that has has trained on how to correct that with sure. their particular aircraft they'll just go okay this is what's happening let me just put left pedal and right yaw or whatever sure. i don't know if that's right but and they just do that and do whatever and and once the airplane returns to a stable flight and they're out of that spin then they're good but if they don't do it immediately and that spin goes too hard, I mean, if they're only 5,000 yeah. feet up, they've mm. got seconds to fix that. Sure. I imagine a lot of it is muscle memory. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's got to be. We, we know some, or rather my, uh, my, my aunt, her, her, her significant other flies a lot. He's the nicest guy in the world. Mm. And, and he's mm. very, very, very adamant about unless it is a perfectly crystal clear oh, yeah. blue mm-hmm. sky day. And Why there's risk no, it? Yeah. yeah. And, and he's a seasoned. You should enjoy it, you yeah. know? So, you know, I, I, I think it really goes to show that that, well, back to the uh, uh, issue of our the human internal gyroscope is mm-hmm. not very good. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, and at, that's one of the worst feelings too. Is mm. whenever that thing gets thrown off. Having never been in a small plane that's been thrown off. <laughs> oh well, no. Yeah, I've never experienced that either. But yeah, um, yeah hopefully, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> not go with, uh, with both hands. I. Uh, I only fly with one of my friends and he is, he's, he's just got to be one of the best private pilots out there because he is so, cool. so thorough and he just, oh, sure. he, he really takes time to, to, you know, first of all, fill out a good flight plan and mm. make sure that he's aware of the weather conditions. And, you know, he looks at, okay, if I'm going to go this direction, I need a few outs, which airports are along the way, right. you know, where, where can I dive out if oh, the, nice. if the ceiling drops and I don't Very have thorough. clearance anymore. Yeah. 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 He takes great care of his airplane mm-hmm. and I know this. So whenever we go out and fly, I have zero concerns whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And it helps to know that I can land the plane too. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Did, did, That's you, nice. Have, have you gotten any training in, in, yeah, man, I was so close. Um, I I got soloed. I I did all the stuff. And the only thing I needed 
after that was just a check ride with an FAA examiner, and then they have an oral examination. I'd already taken the written and passed it with like an 88, sure. which is perfect because they tell you you don't want to do too good, or the examiner will see your score and he'll, he'll really try to oh, no. put, put your <laughs> feet to the you. coals. Oh, no. <laughs> so I was, I was pretty proud of that score. Nice. And um, I was so damn close. But I just I ran out of time and I ran out of money like oh. right uh. there at the end. And it's one of those things, you know, you've heard the expression, it's like riding a bicycle. Mm. You never forget it is not like that. No. You oh. have to, it, it very much muscle memory, and you have to be practiced. Mm-hmm. You can learn everything there is to learn and then take a month off, and you're going to be rusty. Sure, mm-hmm. sure. You know? And so it was, it was one of those deals where I'm like, well, I'm going to have to come back to this. But now it's been so long, mm-hmm. it's like I'm going to have to start all over. Uh, I mean, you know? I'm, I'm sure, w- w- while I'm sure some things are more like riding a bike than others, if, if, if you... If, if you learn something once upon a time, I mean, the, the neural pathways are yeah, still there. Right. Yeah, there's still some of that. But, yeah. you know, I, I'd gotten to the point where, you know, my radio calls were good. That's another thing that really trips people out whenever they start that is just talking on the radio. Mm. Sure. Which I don't think I'll have near as much trouble now. A little older, a little more experienced hearing my voice. So. Sure. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> but, you know, whenever you get, when you key that mic and you know you're, you're broadcasting to all these, you know, experienced pilots to ground to air traffic, yeah, it's a lot everybody of can hear you. You ju- you just took over the entire <laughs> network. Oh. <laughs> Whenever you keyed your mic, so you better be able Damn. to fire off what you meant to say, wow. and you better say it intelligently, clear, and quickly. I can't imagine that that while you're up in the sky, somebody's going to berate you for like, oh, oh you used yeah, the they will. Really? <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> no, that's a I, lot of pressure. <laughs> there, there's there's no time for that really for them to berate you. Mm. But I mean, if you had a buddy pilot that was out there or on the network, now, you, you know those guys on the ground probably mm-hmm. that's probably an, a- an airport that you use a lot sure so you don't want to embarrass yourself in front of the people that because you know ne- ne- next thing you know they're gonna see oh we got this guy coming in get ready for a good radio call you know? <laughs> i didn't realize there was this level of like etiquette and oh it's very know. formal yeah it has to be there, everything has uh um you know there's there's regulation and order to everything mm-hmm. but i guess when it comes to operating a flying machine yeah. you really gotta yeah there's really not a lot of room for yeah. Yeah. do what you want yeah, yeah, for right <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh yeah i i like i find it, it sometimes i'm i'm kind of taken aback a little bit like i know it's so normalized because we're all driving cars but mm-hmm. sometimes i just sit with it and i'm like wow i am moving a machine around right now mm-hmm. so i can only imagine flying in the sky where you aren't necessarily as much in control of like where you want to be you know what i mean like oh you can stop whenever you can turn whenever you can park whenever yeah if something goes wrong you can just pull off the shoulder and put the hazards on you can't do that with an airplane so (laughs) to think about that with an airplane i'm like oh shit yeah that's a lot (laughs) that's a lot to think about what's crazy about all that is that 90 i think it's it's higher than that Mm -hmm. 90 percent or higher maybe even 99 percent of all the aviation accidents are a fuel mismanagement problem. A fuel mismanagement problem. Oh my yeah. god! Somebody forgot to fill up the tank. <gasps> oh, or, that's or fucked up. they went too far <laughs> and they just like, ah, we got it. We'll make it. You know, they just extended their flight plan and did, or maybe they didn't take into account the wind. Oh, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe they said, oh, I, I go from Austin to Fort Worth all the time. I don't need to stop. But today there's a, you know, 70 mile an hour uh, headwind pushing on them sure and so they burn up twice as much fuel next thing you know they're making a mayday call ending up in a field off to the side of i-35 <laughs> you know, let, let, let me ask you, you obviously have far more knowledge about flying than than we do Ooh, mm-hmm. easy i don't know and and <laughs> and well that's which isn't it within of itself isn't necessarily saying a whole whole lot yeah. but, but I'm, I'm curious if you have any opinions about people who fly through the bermuda triangle so i think they just found amelia Earhart's uh, remains <gasps> I th- I think I saw something where they found. Are you are you kidding? They with found us? An, No, they found an airplane. It was of the make and model or type that that she was flying, and it had bones in it, and they were ov- clearly female bones or whatever. <gasps> I don't. No. I just kind of skimmed past this because I was like, dude, dude, dude. Oh, it wasn't the onion, was cool. it? <laughs> it wasn't. Oh, it, <laughs> these days you don't know. You have you to double know. check. Yeah. You know, these days you have to double check. <laughs> it could have been. I don't know. But uh, no, I I think that. You know, we don't know everything. Mm -hmm. So if, you know, you go to a village and the villagers are like, hey, man, welcome to the village. You see that forest over there? Stay the fuck out. 
you should probably just listen to them, mm. you know? So if there's like some folklore and, hey, the Bermuda Triangle and stuff, and you don't have a clear reason to go, maybe stay away. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I, I just wish I Word knew to the, the wise. <laughs> yeah. I just wish I knew what the, um, like what, what, for, uh, what that was. Which part? The Just the whole Bermuda oh, Triangle isn't thing. isn't it like going itself. into another dimension or something? Well, well, there's a lot of different... There's a lot of different... Screwy things. Yeah. Um, But even the Amelia, I didn't hear about... Now, granted, we've been... Could be the onion. <laughs> it could be the onion. <laughs> ever, I've ever, that onion. Ever since... Okay, so so uh, my, my aunt and her significant other, the one that flies the plane, uh-huh. they're, they're, they are probably the most peaceful and happy people that I think we yeah. know. And, and, and I think, really I think sweet. it is for two reasons. One, my aunt never had kids, but, but the <laughs> other one, and the other one is, um, they don't watch the news. Oh God. That's gotta be, that's it. Hands down. Well, well it's, <laughs> it's, it's very, very interesting. Cause it, I mean, I, especially when I was in undergrad and grad school, I was very deeply, deeply, deeply politically involved in, in the political groups at whatever school I was going to. Mm-hmm. So I, 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 um, I mean, I've met a few po- I've met a few politicians before. So, I mean, I've, 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 I've been in the game before. And yeah. what I find is I, I tell my patients, you know, you have no idea what the effect is just watching somebody scream and tell you how dangerous it is to be alive. And I say this, but I don't, I never actually gave myself a chance to experience just how much of an impact is this. So after the election, I just kind of quit watching the news altogether. Yeah. And, and mind you, I mean, I, I would get CNN and Fox news alerts cause I wanted to make sure I understood what was going right, on, right. on both sides. Mm-hmm. Um, but I can tell you just for really two months of not consuming any news, just things I didn't expect me just been sleeping better, remember things mm-hmm. easier, just yeah. not mm-hmm. in a bad mood as all, really at all. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Just a lot of things are different and it's like, there's no way this is just because I'm stop watching the news. So I gave myself like a week to mm-hmm. just allow myself to consume n- news <laughs> as much as I had. And you got the, uh, I've diabetes. Been, yeah. I've been <laughs> super irritable this week, not sleeping yeah. as well. I'm like, bullshit, it can't oh. possibly have that big of an effect. Mm, She's like, that makes, oh, that's what's I going on. I was like, on. that makes sense now. <laughs> Shoot. But it's, 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 <laughs> it's, it's, it's it, it really is, um, it, mm-hmm. it really is a, people don't realize how just being exposed to the news too much of it, how it can really um, just screw up your your uh, you know your mood management. Absolutely, no, and I mean, uh, and from from the standpoint where I am at, like, I mean, I I really do w- want to keep in and keep tabs on like what's going on in our world and all yeah. that good stuff. And um, but I practice very very similar things to where I've if I know it's going to lead me somewhere to feel anxious, I probably won't do it just to kind of like what is it like a reserve my energy i guess or like just kind of like conserve it to be able to utilize whatever energy i have in my body to be able to help other people and and do the right things and whatever um but even when what happened with the capital happened like we watched a a, like a doc like a very very short documentary kind of like um giving the highlights of what happened and just to kind of keep people informed um, and watching that was so hard. Like yeah. I have a horrible childhood, um, anxiety habit where I bite my lip a lot and yeah. I start to bite the skin off and I just start to mm. kind of like, and it, it starts to hurt after a while. Yeah. And I just remember after that, I want to say it was 45 minute video, yeah. uh, that I was watching and just keep, kind of keeping alert on what the hell's going on. I like a bit through all of the bottom of my mouth oh and my it God. just, it hurt. Like it was actually starting to bleed a little bit, but I was like, okay, I kind of knew this was coming, but <laughs> wow. uh, just yeah. even, even watching it, just like the, the, the tone of the voices that are there that are explaining the situation, the people that are being interviewed, the, the, the actual footage that you're watching. It's yeah. like, it really does create such a high degree of distraction from like yourself that you start to kind of like engage in weird behaviors that like maybe you used to do when you were younger or even now as an adult, like, you know, it's, it's, it's really sad. It really is. And it's very tragic to watch, but I mean, even just seeing that I was like, okay, I have to be very mindful of how, how much I allow myself to actually view news. I would rather just like read a a couple of articles and just really kind of get a better feel for what's going on versus seeing something like CNN. Cause 
the, if you, if you, if you notice like the voices that everything, it's just like so heightened that mm-hmm. like immediately as you start hearing them, like you'll, you'll feel it in your body. Like yeah. just the tension being I'm carried. I'm kind of getting stressed out now. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, no, but, but it does. It I needed effect. to describe it to yeah. you. I'm just like, holy shit. Like words matter. Right. I mean, there, there's something about and that. The tone. And I, yeah. And I was, it's so I saw insane. something the other day. It was a, uh, I'm going to get I'm totally going to screw this up. It was either a Chinese or a Japanese, uh, mm biochemist biologist something like that anyway he did an experiment on water molecules Mm -hmm. and he exposed uh one group of uh water molecules to the word love or something Mm -hmm. and then he took another set of molecules and he exposed them to hate and then he took another one there was three sets i can't remember exactly what they were Mm -hmm. but it physically changed the water molecules Mm -hmm. and you're like "Mm, that's bullshit there's no way it's true, apparently. True. So, and and there's other examples of that. They've done it with plants. They've done it with, mm-hmm. you know, d- just different stuff. And I mean, I I think that just an observation that you can make in your own life is is kind of noticing like who are the happy people? Is it the guy that runs around flipping people off in traffic <laughs> and <laughs> talks shit to his wife and yells at the dog and tells the kids they don't amount any, in, to anything? <laughs> yeah. Or is, sure. is it is it the person that uh, is is always grateful and always saying yeah. you know things that uh, that that are meant to encourage and uplift? That's probably going to be the happier person. Absolutely. Sure. Have so. you uh, have you seen Happy? It's on. No, I've heard about Amazon it. We, we might have even talked about it, but I, I yeah, watch yeah, yeah. It. Oh my god, I, I think I might have mentioned it the last time. So yeah. like, as you're bringing up happiness, like they really really dive into like not just in america but like in different countries different areas like how do people perceive happiness Mm -hmm. and you know unfortunately because of our society and just how um maybe how we've been kind of guided to i I idealize or romanticize the idea of having a lot of money and that being um the source of happiness and whatever the hell Mm -hmm. else um, it's actually like, it's not extrinsic value that really right. holds you to a, a, such a more grounded level of being self. Like it's intrinsic. It's like, what are you doing internally? Like who are the people that you're surrounding yourself with? Like, what are you doing in your spare time? Like, mm-hmm. how are you showing yourself love? How are you showing up for yourself? Period. Yeah. You know, like, are you giving yourself time to just lay on the floor in yoga mm-hmm. and just like, enjoying the ability to just breathe yeah that was the hardest thing out of that whole yoga practice for me I, and i the fact that that was the hardest part was like very telling and i was like <laughs> <laughs> i was like cursing i think it says like, <laughs> something that doing nothing takes more energy than doing yes something. it's yes. very true like I, my muscles tensed up as she uh, as she like so the person that i was doing yoga with she she prefaced that we were going to be sitting or laying there for a significant period of time. She's like, just give yourself time. And I was like, wait, what do you mean? (laughs) I was like, I have to, I have to shower. I have to get ready. I have to go do this. And so I'm like, okay, fine. I'm like, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. And so I tried to just really lean into what she was asking. And I found that within maybe like, because we did this for about three minutes. So like within a minute and a half, that's when I actually started to relax the fact that it took a minute and a half to actually get there was actually really obnoxious because all I wanted to do was open my eyes, sit up, (laughs) look around, like look at them. Like all I wanted to do was just make sure I was thinking more than just being. It's so hard to to pull your brain out of gear. Yeah, it's it's awful. Yeah, I I almost feel like I can't ever do it. And, And so when I do try to do that, when I try to just sit there and and clear my head and to me that's just the wildest idea mm-hmm. because i i i think it's everybody but i've mm-hmm. got probably 50 different things running mm-hmm. in the background all the time and to <laughs> shut that off just seems impossible mm-hmm. i'm able to do it for about 5 seconds at a time like if i sure. if i if i spend 15 minutes sitting there really trying to blank everything out i can grasp that but just for a moment and then i have to try again and mm-hmm. so it's like five seconds here, three seconds there, a yeah. second, you know, but it's, man, it's hard. And yeah. I don't know if like, if but those five seconds is, is something that you should be really like, oh, but can you ever get to the yeah. point where you can actually turn it. that five seconds into 15 minutes? Like, could you actually do that? I yeah, th- I think you can. I think with, with like, I mean, cause you know, practice makes perfect. Right. Sure. So, you know, I don't like, feel like I'm getting any better at it. Though. No, <laughs> it no, 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 <laughs> but it takes significant. Pe- it's like, it's like you're building your muscles. Yeah. Like you're going to the gym, but I want abs now. <laughs> I know. I, 
I think I we need, all I need do. That lower. I think abs. we all do. <laughs> but 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 life, human existence does not work that way. I and I think that's where we have to kind of like create that a little bit of like an awareness of yes, our life and like our surroundings definitely encourage this fast pace, like let's go, 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 fast energy, fast um internet fast food fast everything yeah. like you know absolutely don't get me wrong i fucking love it like <laughs> i love it I, I like it a lot but also it's great to kind of bring yourself back into kind of like this connection with you don't have to rush anything all you yeah. have to do is just like take a minute with yourself right. and try that's it just try like it doesn't even have to be successful it, has to, it, it could just be an effort and that is enough yeah. But like, I feel like we're so surrounded by this idea of we have to meet a certain goalpost. We have to meet a certain standard. We have to hit a certain bar. We have to be successful through status, money, whatever. Yeah. That when you, when you do something like yoga or meditation or, you know, even bar or whatever, like you are sitting, you're you're giving yourself the ability to be with you, just you, not with the duties that you have to commit to and whatever the hell else. And I think that's actually really nice to like, even if you have those five seconds, that's it. That's all you have. Like thou, those five seconds are like it. Like they're the ones yeah. that you should hold on to and be like, I had those five seconds. So yeah, those are mine. So you had, you had asked, is it, um, You've been doing it for a long time. Is it possible to get to the point where you can do it for 15 minutes? You know, I think a lot of it also is I think people don't don't know what it's what it's like to be in that spot. And and whether it's um so a lot of our clients who have anxiety disorders, maybe they'll take Xanax and mm -hmm. and I tell them, you know, there's a right way to do things and a wrong way to do there's a productive way of doing things and an unproductive way of doing right. things. And that, that can be grossly abused. It can, right? mm -hmm. it can and, it, and it very, very much often is. Yeah. The idea, the, the, the best way to take something like Xanax is to take it and then expose yourself to whatever the things are that make you anxious. Yeah, not after. I'm sorry. It needs to be proactive, not reactive, right? Mm -hmm. Well, well, in the sense that there's a th there, there, there's a therapeutic strategy in the sense that um, let's just say. Um, the grocery store made you anxious. Okay. Mm -hmm. And let's just say you had hired me to be your personal therapist where uh, I, I'm literally with you 24-7, right? Okay, we're in H-E-B. We're, yes. we're, we're in H-E-B. <laughs> it's what I would, Sunday. What I would ask you to do is, is 15 minutes beforehand, I would ask you to put, uh, uh, you know, uh, your prescription underneath your tongue, let it sink in. And then I would tell you, you know, go through the grocery store and just notice the f feelings of fear that you're not feeling. Mm -hmm. And just notice the absence of the anxiety. Notice the absence mm -hmm. of people are judging me and, and every, and, you know, spotlights on me. Yeah. And, and just let yourself relearn what it means to be, uh, you know, at the grocery store or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. But even, um, you know, whenever it's, uh, uh, you, you use Xanax and, and then you suddenly experience, oh, this is what it's like to not have um, anxiety. Or even people that use like psilocybin for, uh, you know, meditation purposes. And then they're mm -hmm. like, oh, this is what that level of meditation is like. The idea is that you experience it. And so then you know, oh, this is what that is. Mm -hmm. So that you can get there without the aid. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But it's like, how do you know where you're going if you don't even know what it, if you don't know what there is like, you don't know if uh, you won't know if you're there or not. Sure. If that makes sense. Yeah. You're mm -hmm. trying to get to a destination, but you don't know what the destination yeah. is. Yeah. You're never yeah. going to get anywhere. So, yeah. so, so there's a lot of things where people um, get frustrated because they say, you know, I just can't get to that point. I don't even know what it's like to have my brain shut off. Mm. And, and there, you know, throughout human history, we have found ways to uh, overcome just sort of the human inability to turn the brain off. Yeah. Um, I mean, for, for survival's sake, it's, it wants yeah. to be on all the time. Right. And I, uh, I'm sorry if I can interject, but like, I, just even with what you're saying, like, absolutely. Like, it's so interesting how people can very much, uh, create this judgment towards themselves of like, it's not looking the way it should look. And it's like, rather than focusing on what it should look like, just allow yourself to have an experience with it. Like, that's all you need to do. Like, you don't have to push yourself to be perfect. You don't have to push yourself to be completely you know, absent of any anxiety. It's like, yeah, you might feel some discomfort. Like in HEB, I don't know if you know this, and I'm sure you do, <laughs> that the aisles are so damn narrow. It and it's like- It's weird, right? And it's basically like you're 
impeding in somebody's space and you're like, sure. <laughs> you're like, Hey, sorry. It gets aggressive. I'm just, right. I, I'm just trying to get the flower over here. Yeah. Um, so like it, it can get really aggressive to some degree, but you know, I know I even it. when I go to the store, it's like, I meet all kinds of people and there are some people that maybe are, um, if they're handicapped, they're, they're driving on their little things and they ask me like, Hey, can you grab this for me? I'm like, right. absolutely. I'm happy to do it. And so like, it's interesting because it's like, oh, like that, that gives me this small experience of like, oh, wow, like th there's this level of connection, mm -hmm. even though they're, everyone is just doing their own thing. Right. However, it's like uh, when you're in there, it's like uh, anxiety is everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like you will feel anxious in any department, in any, in any area, produce, like whatever. Produce is probably the biggest area where I feel the most anxiety because yeah. there's always a lot of people in that area. And, yeah, or the meat, and right? Yeah. yeah. It, and the produce are like, oh, or like the vegetables and things like that and where everyone is stalking them. And then you have the wonderful people at HEB that are um, getting the groceries for people to pick up. Right. So there's people everywhere. And mm -hmm. so you're just kind of like, okay, let me do some mindful moving. And then my cart is too big. So you're like, hi, sorry. Yeah, I'll, so, I'll take my cart to the end. Yeah. Park it, no. And then come back. <laughs> yeah. And I, I carry my purse with me and I'm just like, okay, let's do this. Um, but you will experience anxiety everywhere. And I think it's about, it's not, it's not more about like, I need to do this perfectly. I need to not feel any anxiety whatsoever, but even seeing like, okay, this is my opportunity to really be able to, do exactly what I'm working towards, like using the tools to just kind of breathe a little mm. bit to say, excuse me, like, pardon me, like move, moving aside yeah. or asking, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to get through so that way they can move aside so that way you can move aside. I need to shop at your HEB because the HEB I'm at, they don't, people don't talk. Really? It's just like, oh, you almost, shoot. You almost yeah. feel like you need like shoulder pads and <laughs> oh, a helmet. Oh yeah. And, no, know. I go to the HEB and Mueller just to, just so you know, it's, do they make you pay it's for your bags? so lovely. Huh? Do they make you pay for your bags? Uh, no, actually not often. Really? Huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. They, they, Some do. <laughs> oh, really? I thought all There's of the whole story there. there. Yeah. Like, I mean, they normally do, but like, I usually ask for like two and if they're, if I usually need like maybe one or two more, they won't charge me for it. They're super nice about mm. it. Like, and, but people there in that area are really friendly in general. So I really no. like going there. So that way, if I need a move or if I need a like request for somebody to move for me, like, it, it won't be as like heavy of an experience, but no. I mean, not every HEB is like Mueller, of course. So, you know, we are faced with these experiences of like, okay, this is where I get to show up with my boundaries, show up with um, my sort of communication with my ability to, to resolve conflict. If they're really pissed off and you're like, I'm just trying to move, sir. Like it's whatever yeah. uh, or ma'am, whatever. Um, <laughs> But it, we're constantly faced with opportunities to um, really practice what we learn in our everyday, mm -hmm. whether it's from our therapist, whether it's from our psychiatrist, whether it's from things that we're reading to improve ourselves. Um, but as far as like with a with a grocery store, like, yeah, like we're, we're going to face anxiety no matter what. It's like, what do you what are you going to do with that anxiety that's going to really make you feel successful or help you feel successful? Yeah. So, um, well, I, I appreciate that. Um, yeah. I've, I've been trying since I moved to Austin to try and kind of rewrite the way I'm living my life mm -hmm. so that I can get to a better place where there's less stress and mm -hmm. less, uh, just, just be able to enjoy life mm -hmm. rather than mm -hmm. work my ass to death yeah. until, you know, till I'm 65 or 70, <laughs> you know? Sure. Um, and I, one of the things that I kind of concluded is that I need to, in order to get to a place where I don't feel like I have to work myself to death, yeah. where I'm, I'm happier as a person, mm -hmm. let's get rid of some monthly bills. <laughs> so I don't know if you noticed, I didn't drive here. Um, I almost took an Uber, but a friend was in town and oh. just dropped me off. Oh, that's so lovely. But yeah. I got rid of my truck. I live right down the street from work and there oh, was this, ass, there was this man. little motorcycle sitting in the shop and it was just covered in dust battery you got a was motorcycle? dead kind of i mean that's so cool i do but i mean it's just for getting back and forth to work so yeah. anything anything else is oh, yeah. you know catch a ride uber yeah. or whatever but yeah. um that that's been a great thing so i got rid of the truck yeah. i had a trailer that i was still paying on from my previous company 
And it's like the one thing that I've needed to get rid of. Mm-hmm. It's gone now, so I don't have that payment. Sure. And That's I'm just badass. I'm just working my way down the list. Yeah. And the next thing that I, we kind of talked about this earlier, the price in this area for housing is insane. <laughs> sure. So I'm like, what else could I do? Well, I'm paying $1,400 a month for a mm-hmm. one bedroom. Mm-hmm. That's insane. Yeah, it's so a lot. Why don't I try to find like some... I know there's got to be some cool people out there that have an extra room Absolutely. and I'll just rent a, rent a room from them. Sure. If it doesn't work out, I'll find someone else. You sure. know, it's no big deal. But I just, I feel like, I well, I don't feel like, I know for a fact that as Americans, we get ourselves backed into corners mm. and uh, maybe it's not just Americans. Maybe it's just Western lifestyle, but mm, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. you know, we, it, we, we think it's perfectly f- acceptable to have an $800 a month car payment. Mm. Yeah. We think it's totally acceptable to have yeah. this, that, and the other. All these things that we don't need. Nine mm-hmm. different streaming services, 11 mm-hmm. credit cards, you know, mm-hmm. all sure. this different stuff. Yeah. And I don't think in like the 1980s there was such a huge amount of personal debt. But I think like right mm-hmm. now the average personal debt is somewhere like $34,000 oh, on, on yeah. credit cards, not mortgages. Yeah, not, yeah. not like sure. that. Yeah, I've 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 heard the third or the number I've heard is thirty five thousand. Yeah, um, but that that mm-hmm. that doesn't. I mean, I've heard the same thing. Yeah. Sure, I don't think it used to be like that, but it's no. it's it's socially normative now right. for us Absolutely. to be like, got to have a car. It's got to be a reliable vehicle. So mm, I'm going to yeah. be paying. You know, on the low end, my my truck payment was three hundred and seventy something dollars a month. <laughs> yeah, which to me that's a lot. Yeah, it's it one is. of the most expensive vehicle payments I've ever had. Sure, but then I've got a guy that I know that drives a big three thirty five hundred uh Dodge Dooley mm-hmm. and he's paying almost nine hundred dollars a month for that. Yeah. What are you doing? It's why it's insane. How it's insane. how could you even <laughs> think that that's okay? Yeah. Well, it's it's you'd kind of said it best it a second sets, ago. It's it, become normalized. Yeah. It, yeah it's it sets the normative. narrative. Yeah. It it's, sets the narrative for people because honestly, like if you think about it in high school, what do we have? Like home ec or yeah. um, sex sex ed or whatever the fuck. Frivol- sex frivolous sex bullshit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and don't get me wrong. Like I, I totally dig all those classes and, and there's definitely a point to all of them. Yeah. But, you know, I, I know me and Andrew have talked about this before where it's like, I don't understand why in high school they don't teach financing 101 so many things, budgeting yeah. 101 Which, kind of things you know yeah. what i mean like there's, stuff that we're definitely going to need to know in the future yeah, there's because, classes these kids don't need and there's also a yeah. shit ton of information like absolutely why don't give them a, a little bit of a business class mm-hmm. why, why are we just teaching our children yeah. how, to, how to be good workers in a factory absolutely or whatever? Or, i mean times have changed them towards college. times have changed and yeah. like the focus has become so different where it's absolutely like you have all of these social media um avenues Mm. where people express their opinions and i mean that's a really wonderful thing and at the same time it's like this gives people the open door to push for like oh you want this fancy thing you want this expensive thing like you see you see the commercials and it's like ah if you drink a corona you're gonna have lots of friends are you gonna be hanging out at the beach it's like (laughs) i want that you know what i mean (laughs) it's like it it, it's it's all it's all a tactic you know Mm. what i mean and so this is why we need yoga, taking time for ourselves, meditation, like all of these things, mental health, a therapist to actually normalize the experience of what you're having and say, no, like you're not wrong. Like it's just that society has an image in, in mind that can never be met by anybody. And so this is where we learn to adjust and, you know, pursue our own happiness, Mm -hmm. happiness. Yeah. So there's this great, there's this great, um, I don't want to call it a paradox. I'm not sure what word to use for it, but, Mm -hmm. but we're, we're, because we're a social species, we're, we're designed to try to fit into what's going on in Mm -hmm. the mainstream. Mm -hmm. There's also the idea that I think it was Nietzsche that said being well adjusted to a sick society doesn't mean you're well adjusted. That's, that's pretty important. Yeah, mm-hmm. extremely important. And I have to. I should tattoo that on myself because I, I think I might. That all the time. <laughs> I need a tattoo. That might be it. But yeah, like, right. You have, on you, your forehead you, to just remind oh, you every single day. But I want to get a job. I do. <laughs> <laughs> no face tats and, until I'm you like sixty five. You just put makeup on it. It's all good. Uh, <laughs> when, when you have two uh, prerogatives that are in conflict of one another, it creates something in your brain called a double bind. Okay. Mm-hmm. A double bind is when you're trying to uh, do two. When you're trying to have two truths exist at the same time that can't, the most common example is um, 
you're born inherently knowing love your caregiver and run from people that hurt you. Well, how do you negotiate it when your caregiver is the one hurting you? Yeah. It creates a double bind. Okay. F- formerly, it, this isn't true. We, we realize this isn't true, but we formerly thought that double binds is actually what caused schizophrenia. Huh. Mm. So when you live in this world where it's like, I need to get along with society, but I also need to uh, practice you know, ha- healthy habits, self-sustaining habits. Mm-hmm. Um, it, when, when those two are in conflict, when you can't be doing what society is doing and be living a healthy life, it, it creates this huge, you know, internal conflict. Cause it's yeah. like, what do I do? Do I do my own thing? Meaning I'm leaning away from society and I'm kind of doing this kind of unprescribed thing that no one, you know, there's really no security cause there's not a lot of people doing it with me. Or do I jump in bed with everybody else? I feel mm-hmm. safe cause everybody else is doing it too, mm-hmm. yeah. but it's also, you know, it's again, it's the whole being well adjusted to a sick yeah. society doesn't mean yeah. you're well adjusted. Yeah, the, and it, it's really wild. Not, I'm not going to cite any personal or any uh, specific uh, incidents mm-hmm. because I don't want to get political. But sure. it okay, is fine. it is weird to watch, you know, a large populace get behind one idea that is so blatantly wrong. Mm. You see it, and you're just like, "What yeah. the fuck are they talking about?" How does anybody believe this? Also, I mean, just even looking at, and I, you know, without going too hard into it, yeah. like you think about it and it's like, what's going on for the people that are following it? You know, like what, yeah. what's going on in their lives? For like sure. how have, how, how has their, sorry, how has their development, you know, impacted what, where they're at in that moment? That? Like yeah. what, what makes that answer the right answer? Because yeah. truly, like if, if you were to think about like Carl Jung, it's like, okay, like our truth is our truth and, mm. and that's true. Yeah. And it's like, it's not to say that your truth isn't true or my truth isn't true. It's just that our personal truths are just what they are. Yeah. And we can't judge them. We can't say, no, you're wrong or whatever. It's, it just is. Yeah. Mm. However, you know, when you think about these experiences that are happening right now, it's like, I wonder beneath that, like beneath those actions, beneath the responses, beneath the, you know, what we actively see outwardly, extrinsically, mm-hmm. it's like, what's going on internally that this is, this is it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, and this is where we kind of get into how have people grown up? What are the values of other people? What have they learned as far as their own yeah. values? Like yeah. not, you know, don't get me wrong. Like parents are really wonderful people. And like, I think they did the best that they can with what they know. Right. However, sometimes it's like generationally we get kind of, uh, what's it called? We become unintentionally, but we become saturated in mm. like old traditional ideas of like generations past. Mm. So we're not allowing space to have new ideas. And, or if we do, it's very uncomfortable. Right. Because think about it. Like when you're getting, when you're getting rid of an old idea, like, okay, if I don't get this done, I'm a failure. Mm-hmm. Like if I try to change that idea, it takes time to change that because yeah. that's been there for a long time. Right. right. So when you think about these experiences and you see just like the heartbreaking experience of people, you know, being against other people, it's like, it, it's, it's very heartbreaking in a lot of ways. Cause it's like, you think that we as social creatures want to connect and want to have an ability to like see it through together um, unfortunately that's not the case and it's, it's just reality. Like I, it's, it's wishful thinking on yeah. my end. Cause I'm, I just, I'm an eternal optimist, but, um, it's still really sad to kind of experience what reality is and to yeah. not feel like, damn. Well, it's good you know, that you're like, an optimist because there's, <laughs> eno- there's enough, there's enough people like me running it around hurts going, sometimes I'm like, I'm optimistic. <laughs> yeah yeah meanwhile i'm sitting there just looking at people like oh, oh it's tough straight. it's tough <laughs> I, I i i hate to so somebody asked me and it, actually i get asked this more than one person has asked me if i think that society is past the point of being able to come back together i'm interested mm. to hear your answer because i've heard that same question Oof. posed to other experts so um okay pretend i have two sticks okay uh, and i i this is gonna hurt yeah, you, you, <laughs> or, or I have two. Do you need um, anything? Uh, 
<laughs> well, <hi. laughs> you want in on this? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So caffeinated, <laughs> caffeinated so, hard. So let's pretend I have two, I guess, blocks. Okay. If I tilt them a little bit, you know, they'll, they'll rock, but they'll come back to center. Mm-hmm. There's a, there's a tipping point, point where of, once they have no return. Yes. Once yeah. they pass a certain point, gravity yeah. going this way is going to override, right. you know, it, yeah. the, the, you know, thing trying to get back to standing up. Yeah. You've gone past your fulcrum point. Yes, thank you. I, I think we've, in my opinion, societally have gone past that fulcrum point. I just don't see how we, we, we've we've gotten to the point where too many people can't agree to disagree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you consider that the part of the brain that associates, uh, the part of the brain um, that responsible for personal identity, mm-hmm. when people are talking about politics, that part of the brain lights up. Right. Mm-hmm. So if you disagree with a political policy that I believe with in, them. Yeah, it's taken extremely personally, yeah. extre- in ways that other things are not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, problem is, is when things are taken personally, your ability to think rationally kind of goes away. Yeah. And most people, I think, lack the self awareness to realize, oh, I'm I'm taking something really personally. I'm not yeah. processing what they're saying. I'm yeah. just feeling attacked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You listen to uh, you listen to respond, not listen. No, you listen to respond, not listen to hear. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like, you're just waiting, like when you're waiting to have a response, like you're not really listening to the experience. Mm-hmm. And so like from a therapeutic standpoint, like you can actually take a deep breath and let them continue speaking. And then you'll be able to like take in what they're saying. Yeah. But um, if you feel so, so inclined to like respond all the way. Um, but in these situations, absolutely. Like there's no room for listening. All there is, is I need to make my point and I need to make it right now. I actively work on that because I think that Mm -hmm. that is just, I think that's an inert or that innate innate Mm -hmm. thing in humans that absolutely we're, it's, it's like we're engaged in kind of a a battle, you know, Mm -hmm. and we're trying to get our point across. Um, but you, you get a lot more value out of a conversation if you do actively try to hear what they're saying. Yeah. And so my, my kind of working mechanism for that is to hold on to little things inside the conversation. I make myself a little checklist in my head while you're talking. I'm like, (laughs) Oh, I like that. Oh, I want to know more about that. Uh Oh, I want to talk more about that. You know, just kind of, yeah. So, and, and for me that, that makes me a better active listener. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but, I, it, it kind of like the meditation thing. It takes practice and mm-hmm. I feel like I'm getting a lot better at it. Yeah. Um, I'm making more headway in that area than the, the meditation thing, but, <laughs> um, yeah, everything in its time. It's, it's yeah. something else that has to be practiced. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Absolutely. I, I remember one of my best friends in, in grad school, in grad school for, for me, I guess, was, I guess, nine years ago now. Yeah. Um, but it was interesting cause she and I had extremely different political, we weren't on opposite sides of the spectrum, but yeah. we we definitely mm-hmm. disagreed on fifty percent of things. Right. But we were really good friends. We hung out all the time, yeah. and we had really wonderful discussions about the things we disagreed on. Yeah. The kinds of conversations I had with her nine years ago, I simply cannot be replicated. I think yeah. in today's uh, mm-hmm. just just the the the, the, the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, if if I say something. If you disagree with it, rather than wondering, gee, why do you think that? Instead, it goes to, wow, you're a terrible person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, there, I think there are some things that are ostensibly, uh, excuse me, that are objectively bad. And so I always wonder, if, if you think this thing that I think is objectively bad is okay, I, 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 I'm dying to know what your reasoning, what your logic is. Yeah. Because I want to... I want, I put myself in your shoes. I want to understand yeah. how you think. Understand perspective. Because it's easier. Yeah. It's. I think it's better for people to try to understand someone's perspective mm-hmm. than it is to convince themselves that you're a terrible person and yeah. I shouldn't have to listen to what you have to say. Because that's yeah. crossing a very big spiritual, emotional boundary, uh, intellectual boundary. You yeah. know what I mean? It's yeah. like, we don't want to cross boundaries with other people. We want to be able to understand your world. And like, just like how I was talking about how your truth is your truth and my truth is my mm-hmm. truth. And, we're not wrong. We right. just experience our truth in our experience, right? Mm-hmm. And so oh, that was a lot of... Well, we, <laughs> we went into that the last... Epi- do you yeah. Remember, we talked a lot about that. Oh, we did? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I remember that. Um, and so like to even think about it from their perse- perspective, sorry, it's like uh, rather than saying pushing you away and saying, no, I don't like it, go away, mm-hmm. you know, I, I want to know. I want to know For what sure. I don't know. 
You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. I want to know what I'm not aware of. So I want to know what your world looks like. Right. So that way I can connect to that and I could connect to you. And mm-hmm. like we can have a great conversation about how you feel and you believe and how I feel and I believe. And we could still respect and care for each other without feeling like we have to, you know, come at each other with like fucking, you know, uh, fire and pitchforks. Anger and rage. Yeah. 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 Do, do, do you ever uh, watch or listen to anything by Jordan Peterson? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love that guy. Oh, yeah. I think he's great. Yeah. Uh, he, <laughs> and so many people hate him. Well, and it's it's that left versus right shit. Right. Mm. And he's mm-hmm. considered a conservative, mm-hmm. far right, alt right, whatever. And I don't give a shit about any of that. So I just listen to what he has to say and I go, you know what? He's making good points. I like yeah. that he's breaking it down like this. He's a... Yeah. He's a He's a thinker. He takes time to explain things fully, and I, I love stuff like that. I told a friend of mine the other day, I was, she she asked me if I knew who Killer Mike was. Killer and I Mike. was like, oh, sure. I love Killer Mike. And she's like, oh, do you like Run the Jewels? And I was like, what's Run the Jewels? <laughs> she's like, that's his band, you idiot. <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, no. When, oh, I, when, right. I said, <laughs> when I said I like Killer Mike, I mean, the, the, when I hear him speak, like uh-huh. podcasts, right. uh, uh, media interviews or whatever you call that pre- press conferences right. things like that when that guy gets in front of a crowd and actually talks to people about I, I, I think the last time I saw him stand up in front of a crowd was after the uh, help me with the man's name Floyd George George, 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 George Floyd, Floyd. Yeah. yeah he stood up in front of a crowd and and sure. addressed that issue and the way and the the the, the content of his message and I'm mm-hmm. like who is this dude he's he's just so he's and I didn't necessarily agree with everything he said, sure. but the way he said it mm-hmm. and the the way it was delivered, anyway, all that to say, like, there's few people mm-hmm. that that are on my radar, mm-hmm. like Jordan Peterson, that speak in that manner sure. with with absolute conviction and sincerity. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yes, and that that that's that the, resonates with me. That's the key point: me. sincerity and, and genuineness yeah. and respect. And their their right. their positions yeah. aren't out of spite or out of I want to believe something because I know it'll hurt your feelings. I mean, it's it's like especially Jordan Peterson and Killer Mike. I really I've, I've I don't know him as well as Jordan Peterson, but yeah. I, I do like some of the things he has to say as far as his assessment of like Black Lives Matter, yeah. or something like that. But one thing I with with uh, Jordan, P- I realize he he you know leans more to the uh, you know right, but mm-hmm. but at least everything that I've seen, the way he presents things is very matter of fact. Mm-hmm. It's very you know based on my research. Here's here's what I've did- concluded, and and there's this one interview you might have seen it, but it, there's a, there's this lady interviewing him, and every time he makes a point, she says something to the effect of so basically what you're saying is, <laughs> and then completes the sentence with something he is absolutely totally, not yeah, saying. Yeah, there's nothing more infuriating. Yeah. Well, that whole base. So basically, what you're saying is, I, I think that is really, 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 really stop. common. Just stop right there. You know. Well, it's like you're you're obviously not hearing what I'm saying, <laughs> yeah. and you're you're mutating what I'm saying to give yourself an excuse to not hear That's what I'm saying. That's the only point behind that statement. Basically, what you're trying to say is, and and then your rebuttal should be, just stop. Because that, that's the next thing out of their mouth is trying to reshape the conversation. Sure. So, it, you should just shut people down. <laughs> stop it. Well, and it's and it's and it's <laughs> just hard. ask the question. Well, it's hard because when somebody misunderstands you and then you correct them, uh-huh. they come back at you and say, "Oh, you're being a this, that, or Fill the other." The blank. Yeah. yeah, and it's yeah. like, no, that's there was somebody. There was a um, oh, I really want to get this right. There was a New York Times article where this woman, uh, this woman who happened to have been a female and happened to have been African American, she had she had said. She had written an article about something that was just factually inaccurate. I yeah. I don't remember exactly what it was. It was something to the effect of, and I I'm, I am getting this wrong, but it was something like she had said like a hundred thousand people die every year from gun violence, which was it's about one tenth of that. Yeah. So somebody had pointed that out that that just the number was factually inaccurate, and her response was the people pointing out that my article is inaccurate are sexist and racist. Hmm. It's like well. No, you know, I mean, maybe, but, but yeah, I mean, they could have been, and that doesn't disqualify the yeah. fact that you wrote an article that was factually inaccurate. That's, yeah, that's not indicative of somebody being that thing, but you might be right. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, 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 if you have a, con- I, I see this a lot where if you have a uh, opinion that's, um, ca- that, that's incongruent with your opinion, it's, it's, um, what is it called? Ad hominem. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, um, 
where you attack the person and not the idea. Where I say, rather than, you know, you're a white supremacist, so why do I need to take what you say seriously? Right. You know, things like that. So, um, but, but I think it says something about the overall mental health of society in general to have an emotional in uh, to be emotionally incapable of, of, of hearing opinions that don't um you know if I said I think all kids belong in cages yeah that that I can see how that could be a very triggering sentiment if I said you know I I don't think all college should be completely free and, and here are my reasons yeah. I think that that is a fair thing to say and and you know something to have a conversation about if I say I think college should be not free but certainly cheaper if you come at me and say, well, unless you think it's free, you're a, you know, a, a, a simp for capitalism, it's yeah. like, well, th- th- have a conversation with me. Because mm-hmm. um, I want to know why you think that, but I also want mm-hmm. you to want to know why I think what I think too. Yeah. The whole thing just drives me nuts. And I've gotten to the point where I just will not have that conversation with people. Um, I've, mm-hmm. I've tried to speak intelligently and with gratitude and love with people. Sure. So like, hey, you know, what about this? You know, let's talk about it. You, you say the issue is this. Can we can we pull that apart and really examine why that is what it is? And th- that's that's the way I wish everybody would look at situations instead of just reading a headline and going that bad or that good. You know? Oh sure. Really take it apart. But I have I have through through many difficult conversations I have just chased my tail and realized mm-hmm. if somebody is having a disagreement with you and they just can like like you said. Uh, but what you're trying to say is, or they, they use these tools to kind of just, just it's fuckery. It's not even yeah. mm-hmm. trying to get to a point. Mm-hmm. When people start it's doing filtering. that, they're telling like you filter. that they don't give a shit about this conversation. Yeah, They're, they're telling it you sucks. that I'm, I'm, I'm not, li- I just need you to listen to me. I don't right. want to have this conversation. That's what they're telling you. And for me, there's no point. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're done. There's no reason for us to continue this. And it, it's gotten so hyper aggressive on my end. Like, I'm just like, uh uh-uh, uh, I'm going to, you know, I, I will shut it down immediately because it's not worth my time. It's not mm-hmm. worth my energy. And words matter and it sure. gets me upset. And I just don't sure. want to be in that place. And I've also noticed that whenever people identify that I won't have those conversations, if it's a person that sits on the left, they will say, you must be a conservative. If, if it's a person on the right, They'll call me uh, whatever they want. Sure. Mm. You know, libtard or something like that. And I'm like, that's fine. And I won't engage no, it. People I'll just be like, that. Yeah. I'll, I'll, the only comment they'll get out of me is, huh, how did you arrive at that conclusion? <laughs> and, then I'll, and then I'll leave. And then I'll leave. I'll just. That's good. That's bounceable. a good answer. Or I'll change the subject. Yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. have to be a drama queen it about it. Have to throw be, shit it off doesn't the table. have to be that way. <laughs> it really doesn't. It's like. Well, I, I don't, I'm very confused as to, I mean, maybe it's just like society evolving in the way that it is, but just to have people just be so uninclined to know about what the other person's perspective is. It's like, isn't that the way we kind of get to know each other? It's like, I'm not, just because you tell me like I'm hurting, I'm not going to tell you, no, you don't like, you know what I mean? It's like, no. I, I oh, have you, to understand you don't know that what hurt is. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you about my cat Fluffy in the, in the last Tuesday. <laughs> I'll tell you about her. But it's it's so it's saddening because it's it's creating just this very large separation of people. And um, uh, I lost my train of thought for a second. I'm so sorry. That's okay. But, but I have a question. Yeah. Would you guys like to pause for a quick break? Or sure. Because I, I have to use the restroom. Sure. Please do so. <laughs> <laughs> Please do so. Okay. We had to take a, a little break. Okay. And on, on my way out of the, the room, uh, Andrew said that I sounded kind of like a libertarian, and I was like, no, sir. No, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I wanted oh, okay. to just to explain myself. Cool. Um, that just boxes in general. I, I mm. think that one of the issues with people is like they want to have a team. I don't want a team. I, I don't want to ever... S- identify with anybody else but myself i want to have my own opinions my own morals Mm. so if somebody needs to classify me as something uh they they get to do that and they get to do it without without i'm not putting my input into it Mm. so if you need to put me in a box go right ahead but you know i'm not going to pay attention to that so if if i and i do tend to lean a little more towards like these uh wild libertarians but (laughs) there's also stuff that they say that i'm like what you know so i mean there's not any party that i'm like just who you are exactly and i i really i think everybody should Mm -hmm. 
kind of try to do that. Try to yeah. try to figure themselves out. Well, we, it, it's funny you say that. We were just having this conversation mm-hmm. a few days ago because I, I, up until recently, I would have identified myself as libertarian, and mm-hmm. then exactly kind of what you're saying. Yeah. There, there are so many things that mm. there are enough things they espouse that I don't really <laughs> agree with. <laughs> yeah. Or it's like what? Yeah. We're, we're, I mean, I, I, if, if I would have initially classified myself as that because I'm like, well, there's things on the left I agree with and there's things on the right mm-hmm. I agree with. But mm-hmm. even things in the middle, there are still things I just don't agree with. And mm-hmm. so they're really, perhaps with you, perhaps with me, there, there really isn't like a, to use your word, a box that most accurately defines yeah. what we, um, right. but I think so many people have a hard time. I hate to say this. I think so many people have a hard time thinking for themselves yeah. that well, it's, it's easier true. just to say, oh, I'm a or, this, that, or the other. Yeah, or allowing themselves to be in the gray, yeah. you know, because it's not just black and white. It's They need to know who the people some, are. Yeah, there's sometimes a little room in the middle. Like, it's a spectrum. Yeah, but I know? think most people don't identify as... I don't, mm-hmm. think, I don't think most politically involved people identify themselves as... Uh, not belonging to a party. Mm-hmm. I think I, I'm, I'm, I'm not pulling from a statistic. I would assume at least 90% of people who consider themselves to, believe, to be politically involved would label themselves as one party or another. For, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, anytime it comes up, you know, people are, you know, I'm this, I'm that, whatever. And I'm, what, what are like, you? That's oh, nice. I don't care. <laughs> I'm, I'm from the party. Of I'm me. Really and what I'm, <laughs> Hello, what I'm, I'm Andrew. <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm finding is it's it's that mentality. If you are able to be okay being in that mentality, uh, you're, you're just going to have a better time. And even as a even as a therapist, even as someone who understands human behavior, me knowing, gee, I'll, I'll just be happier if I get rid of old patterns of, you know, old patterns that aren't helping me. For instance, being like deeply, deeply politically involved, identifying as one thing or another. Mm-hmm. But it's it's hard to basically be like I, I reject this group in lieu of being able to think for myself and become and be the person that I want to become and be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Why well, I, I I have to, my 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 conspiracy theory brain mm-hmm. sees you know the powers that be say you know gee everybody is actually working together and coming for us. How do we how do we pit everybody against each other? So that you know the top one person can be left alone again, and I think they did a really effective job in doing that. Mm. So yeah, my, I, can, I don't disagree with you. You know, mm. you you said something very very important, which is that uh, you know, you know, w- w- it it is frightening the things that we don't see, right? And I think it's important to realize that there is something called social engineering that is absolutely very much a thing. Yeah, mm. um, I don't see why anybody you, could believe that it's not. So so. So we have to be mindful that the things that are on TV are presented in a way, are presented in a very purposeful and yeah. strategic way. It's supposed way. to yeah. be clickbait. Yeah. It's yeah. supposed to be clickbait. It's supposed to grab your attention, yeah. keep you engaged. Yeah. You, you know, look, look, pay attention to what's over here while the I do in, stuff over yeah, here. Yeah, the innovation of like, of social media portals and, and avenues and, and, you know, how they um, correlate with, uh, news media sources and all these different things. Like it's just all circulated together. But you know, they've they've. I say they. You know, the the the, the powers that be mm. have basically used all of these tools to, again, excuse me, kind of pit everybody against each other because for a while there that wasn't happening, and you know everybody realized, mm-hmm. wait a second. I mean, it was a proletariat bourgeois kind of thing, mm-hmm. and. Um, but yeah, the whole manufactured outrage thing. I mean, I think it's. I think the powers that be have done a great job of distracting us from the fact that we're all being. I mean, taxed really, really badly. And the, yeah. the government is overspending yeah. by a ridiculous amount. And well, I don't think that we would have nearly as much uh, reservation about paying taxes mm. if we weren't hosting a what kind of transgender reassignment education program in Afghanistan or something like that. Right. There's there it's it's more than just one thing. That right. what, what I just said there's something like that. I'm, the verbiage is off. I didn't say it quite right. right. But it's a thing. Right, right. This this coronavirus bill was supposed to be to help Americans, right? right? And I understand that we've got other people that are affected by this too. Sure. But is this the time to be patting the palms of our lobbyists in order to you know, win favoritism, but hey man, that's just how it works. And I'm sure I don't get it. I know I'm an idiot, but it just doesn't look good. You know, it's got Mm. bad peripherals. It's not a good look that we are spending money in other countries on shit that, hey man, I just don't care. Why, why wasn't that money, you know, put into the infrastructure here? Mm -hmm. Why, why aren't we taking care of these small businesses? They, 
I don't know if you know this, but there's, they're projecting that 80% of all businesses are going to either be on the way out or out. Oh, no. At the end of all this shit. Mm. Because, I mean, it's already... It's not unreasonable because a lot of places in Austin I that know. have been around forever I have know. just closed down. Yeah, it's like, so I, I was driving around with a friend of mine that used to live here. Mm. And we were going down this one, just one street. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like we had to search it out. We're going down one street and she's just pointing stuff out left and right. Yeah. Coronavirus got that. Coronavirus shut that yeah. one down. That one was it, open it, a year ago. Cr- you know, it's, it's creating a very interesting like trauma response for everybody. Because it's like, you know, because yeah. uh, it's very interesting to see how people who are surviving through this experience right now are going to be affected at some time in the later future. Because we, there's a level of isolation, there's a level of like understanding that yeah, like these these smaller businesses are just not going to make it, yeah. and and it's, it's not like just a we're, monetary we're, loss. We're visualizing these like really well known um, restaurants, um, iconic business. Yes, tr- like yeah, just and in a way, it's interesting because it's like we're, we're seeing them as casualties. It's like we're, we're walking through our life and we're trying to figure it out mm-hmm. and then we're seeing all of these businesses close down. So yeah. it just feels very frightening because it's yeah. like, okay, like I feel like everything's closing in around the me. The most disin- disingenuous statement that I've mm-hmm. heard over the last year is whenever somebody is talking about we have to do something to get our economy back online and immediately somebody rebuttals with, well, you just don't care about lives. You only care about money. Mm. But what people don't understand when they say it, something like that, these businesses the don't economy. just represent the economy and money. It yeah. represents someone's livelihood, someone's yes. dreams, someone's hopes. Right, right, right. Yeah. You know, it, it's There's this important. like compilation. And you know, it, it's very interesting that you say that because Andrew and I were talking about it not too long ago and he was telling me about how it can be very difficult to really enjoy what we do in a job and want to live our own lives because we we see value in both of those things and it's like okay we have to create balance and i find myself feeling really frustrated with like okay why don't i have balance yet and it's like you know what it's because the things that we're doing as professionals right now are our strong suits, there are abilities, there are passion. And so we're leaning into those experiences. And then also we have to live our own lives. And Mm. so during this time, it's very weird. It's a very strange time because like we're seeing people going through these experiences in their own worlds. And so we're leaning in and we are present for that. And then we take a step back and we live our own lives. And it's like, it, it, it can be, a lot it's it's very uh uh conflicting mm-hmm. because it's like okay where do i put my energy if i love both things where do i go yeah you know yeah. what i mean and so like andrew and i were talking about that not too long ago and i'm just like oh my god that's so true yeah because i'm having it i'm having such a hard time like i mean figuring out a balance with that yeah. and understanding the perspective in the world of other people and I can listen to it and be there for it and yeah. also understand my own worldview. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, it's mismanaging your, your energy is similar mm-hmm. to mismanaging, you know, mm-hmm. the, the, you know, the, the, the mismanaging, mismanaging government spending. I mean, I hear right. what you're saying that I, first of all, I, I didn't realize we were giving bunches of money to Afghanistan for basically gender studies. Dude, That's news to me. Dude, you need to look at the list of shit. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Uh, no, it's, it's every time they pass a bill. No, Anytime they pass a bill that has to do with budgeting, they do this. Sure, they just slip something in there and it's... But it's like, it's not something. It's like 200, 300 different like subcategories. I mean, it's right. just millions of dollars leaching out into other countries. Well, and, you're, and you said something very important going back to kind of what we were talking about a few minutes ago where if you bring up, hey, we're mismanaging money people say well you're just a greedy person that doesn't care about mm, people right. mm-hmm. and it's like no i care about people so much that yes because you're, you're right i mean eight, you know america <sighs> well, you know part of its charm is you know yeah. mom and pop shops small businesses this mm-hmm. that and the other 80 yeah, percent gone now coronavirus has done a great job of really i mean amazon is just gonna we, we've known for years amazon is gonna put everybody yeah. out of business oh other gosh. than walmart maybe oh my gosh <laughs> and, and, and and this has really kind of accelerated that mm. maybe you know, in the way that the planet just made humans so we could have plastic. <laughs> Maybe coronavirus was just here <laughs> to build Amazon up and destroy all the small businesses. I don't know, man. It's that seems to be the... What, 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 
It just if, you're, if you're trying to find a thread, if you're trying to make sense out of it, you're going to gravitate towards that idea because that's what it seems like is happening. So if you're trying to find intention, of course you're going to come up with that idea. Well, they you know? they, they do say don't let a good who said it never let a good uh, crisis go to waste. I said that. Hey, okay, oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. And I, I believe I somebody lie. else also said it, perhaps a, oh, a little before bit before me. you did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Maybe oh, like a, it, a poet or something. Oh, no, it was, was a politician. I'm, right? Was it, was it, it was a Churchill? I can't remember. I have but, no but idea. But somebody no. definitely said that. And so... Dick Cheney. <laughs> I'm sure he said that too. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's, it's really hard to... Especially with the coronavirus stuff, it's really hard to tell what's in the better interest of people versus what's somebody trying to do something nefarious. And there's... There really is no yeah. way to know for sure. Mm-mm. No, no. You know our mm-hmm. our little government, and I I don't know if I told you this. I did say this recently, and it's hundred percent true. I'm I've always been a weird kid, always. Sure, and <laughs> it just gets worse every day. But one of the weirdest things that I know about myself from childhood is that I heard in an AOL chat room one time. Um, Whenever that was the thing, and kid <laughs> kids were like, "Oh man, let me get on AOL." ASL, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. Up. <laughs> yeah. 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 That, that was the swipe left, swipe right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. That's wow. pretty much the Tinder um, of AOL. But I got on there one day, and I can't remember what little chat room I was in, but somebody was talking politics. I'm like eight, nine. <laughs> wow. And somebody said something about like the government will eventually fail. Because every empire has its rise and fall. Oh. Yeah. And for some goddamn reason, my tiny little brain picked up on that and like oh really honed in on it. Mm-hmm. And so my entire life growing up, like I've just been gathering data like to support that theory. And I think it's because it's easy to see that that's happening. Like, yeah. you, you, you know, I yeah. think probably our pinnacle was at the. Um, you know, the success of World War II. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you, you could say that, or maybe maybe it was the 90s, you know, early 90s, we were at the top of our game or whatever. But mm-hmm. at any rate, I think it's clear to see that like, things are not going right. No. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, there's a pretty good chance that that, that, that statement is, is going to uh, yeah. show itself to be true again. Uh, I don't think we have. What is that? Dialectical behavioral therapy. Dialectical. So, <laughs> Uh, short for DBT, <laughs> but essentially what that focuses on is emotional regulation, distress tolerance, self-soothing, and being able to kind of guide in communication. So assertively communicating, being able to set boundaries as effectively as you can, being able to have conversations where you can understand where you're at and I can understand where I'm at and we can be happy. And you know, so dialectical behavioral therapy is like the awareness of self in the okay. present moment, the awareness of self in experiences where maybe em- emotions escalate mm-hmm. and being aware of being able to soothe them, you know, so it, it incorporates so many tools of being able to interact with other people. Did I just totally throw you off track? No. That question. Okay. <laughs> no, like I, I'm happy to explain it. I just kind of like jumped in there like, wait, what's that? Yeah. No, yeah. DBT is so freaking helpful. And mm. DBT is where a lot of the, these practices come into play, like meditation, yoga, um, sitting quietly, like being aware of self, like internally breathing, like wh- whatever, like all of these different activities are directed towards being aware of the present moment. And being here now versus yeah. like lost in my head over the future. Right. Because it's so easy to get there. Oh, yeah. To, yeah. to, to, to just oversimplify all of that, what you, <laughs> what you want to do and what you need to do are often opposite things. And DBT is mm. how do you negotiate those things. Right? Yeah. This has to do with the emotional and, and logical. The rational and rational. And it, right, it, right. It, it kind of creates this ability to get into wise mind. Wise mind. Wise but, mind. But when you when, the when ground. you're talking about mm-hmm. we're witnessing the fall of an empire, what what do we do as individuals? Um, I mean, that's a really hard question to ask. We've never really lived through this before. Well, yeah. I I I'm I'm starting to see kind of a pattern whenever I look at and what what kind of hone me in on all this is the talk of raising uh, minimum wage. Mm-hmm. It's like okay, well, why not? Okay, let's look at that. If I pay you a hundred dollars. An hour for minimum wage. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be any better off than anybody else. You are Mm -hmm. still a minimum wage earner. Especially if you don't, Mm -hmm. now that you're making more money, if you're not doing the right things with that money, it's all coming out of the wash. Absolutely. 
you know, there there are people where when they get raises, they start spending more than their, what the raise was. And I'm doing the opposite of that. Well, which yeah. is which is what you should do, which is the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. So I, I, you know, I'm, and this too is I, I my guess is is you and I are on the same page about this. But this is also a very contentious issue because people say raise, you know, no one, nobody working forty hours a week. Uh, shouldn't be able to pay the bills, mm. raise these people's wages to $15 an hour. The second you ex- start to explain, well, here's why that might not be sustainable. Here are the unintended consequences of doing that. You're slapped with, well, you must hate poor people. Right. Mm. Right. Right. Because mm-hmm. that's that's always the best thing to do to shut an argument down or shut down somebody else's point of view mm. is to throw some shit in their face and make them eat it. So yeah. Right. You go from trying to make a point to defending yourself as a person. Yeah. Mm. And that's it not... It just loses the point, like, period. Because yeah. uh, all it is is about, like, you trying to hold on to yourself and just like, okay, wait, 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 let me, let me just try to get my point across. Right, right. And then the point just gets completely... Right. navigated to something completely different Grab holes all over the place yes but, absolutely so the the realization with that in mind is that if you s- roll it all the way back you know mm-hmm. after world war ii moving forward our economy just started getting better and better and better you look at like the 1950s mm-hmm. for example you had uh, a household for the man or yeah yeah the man he would go to work and the wife would stay home and take care of the kids take care of the home <laughs> ah. What was okay, that? Sorry, I said, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, not doing that. Um, and you know, we've made a lot of uh, progress as far as like women's rights and equality and things mm-hmm. like that. And that's great. The problem is that no one has the option to do that anymore. Mm-hmm. Even, even with where we are as far as our progression with uh, women's rights and equality and everything, you, you don't have the choice anymore. Most, most families don't have a choice to say, well, I want to go to work. Because right. I want to contribute, they have to go to work. Yeah, and so nineteen yeah. fifties, one person could go to work, and the wife could stay home and watch mm. the kids. That was an option. Mm-hmm. It was normative. Right. Moving forward, okay, we get minimum wage involved, and what, what starts happening? Well, now we both got to go to work, or yeah. maybe dad's got to stay up, get a second job, something like that. But as as minimum wage increases, yeah, you start seeing the value of 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 what I'm earning go down. Mm-hmm. And now it's impossible. Here mm-hmm. we are, 2021. He, I mean, a lot of people, the, the idea of sharing a home and renting rooms out, Airbnb, that's getting real popular because mm-hmm. people are having trouble covering their own bills. Right. Mm-hmm. You can't do it on your own. You just can't. Whereas you could, you know, a long time ago. Well, I, to, if to an extent, I, I disagree slightly. Okay. Uh, I, I think in extreme cases, yeah, you're right. Uh. Just, just society has just left some people behind. Mm-hmm. Um, but the reality is, is um, a lot of a lot of there are a lot of people who are struggling, and part of the reason part of the reason they're struggling is is choices of their own. And I'm sure. I'm absolutely not painting with a broad brush. I'll even go ahead and say that this is fifty um, percent of less than. Fifty percent or less of of people who are struggling. Yeah, but I, I and I'm, I'm pulling from people that I went to school with. Yeah, um, people that I went to a private university with. Yeah. and here we are, ten years later, and I see them posting on Facebook how they have no money, this, that, and the other. What I find very, you know, for I didn't get a smartphone until I was like halfway through grad school, yeah. and I got one because I needed to. Yeah. I tell this to Jana. The first time I spent more than like a hundred dollars on myself, I was like twenty eight years old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Just the idea of it was a watch. It was and it was a watch. It's beautiful. Um, <laughs> it is so beautiful. Actually, it's, it is, it's actually it's the, a silver watch. Well, it's, it's, it's getting yeah, it's, ironically it's getting repaired right now because it's broken. But but <laughs> but I, but I remember Sorry. I remember I, I didn't have an iPhone. I, I didn't. I mean I I went clothes shopping every like two or three years. Yeah. I still kind of do that. Gianna has pointed that out. Yeah. You yeah. know I I just I I, push him to I act I you know my first apartment was a three hundred and eighty square foot mm. you know efficiency studio. Yeah. Yeah. And I I you know so so I. I me personally, I think I made. Me personally, I think I made a lot of sacrifices so mm-hmm. that I wouldn't have to strut. Now, mm-hmm. it was eight mm-hmm. years worth of sacrificing, and I think a lot of people have a hard time conceptualizing sure. saving and investing for a decade because it's like, but I but I have this now. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And and certain things like having a hundred dollar pair of shoes, having a three hundred dollar outfit, having yeah. the most recent iPhone. Right. These are all things that have become normalized, and mm-hmm. these are all things that add up. Mm-hmm. I know people who. 
uh, there's one person in particular, and I think you know who I'm talking about. Name drop. Come on. I'm not going ah. to. No. <laughs> I, I feel bad enough because if they listen <laughs> to this, we don't need to do that. If they listen to this, they're going to know I'm talking about <laughs> them. So you know who you are, and uh, uh, thank you for letting me use you as a as a as a punching thank bag you. here. But there's someone that I know that doesn't really have a job, and they mm-hmm. ju- uh, last year they just bought a brand new car. Mm. And they still don't really have a job. And they kind of complain to me, I don't really have a lot of money to do anything. And it goes to the thing, I'm like, bro, you, you what? your monthly income goes yeah. to your car payment yeah. for a car you don't, don't yeah. need. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so it's like, it's hard for me to feel bad for this person. Oh, I, no, 100%. And so, I, I think we're both right. But at this Absolutely, sure. because that is to be taken in consideration. And like we talked about and earlier, $34,000 debt is nothing for yeah. people. Yeah, sure. no, let me just interject though, because I mean, I come from the perspective of, you know, I, I lived in an area and uh, I was surrounded with people that did not have that kind of like... Uh, intellectual financial savviness um to where i'm learning it a little later on in life which is totally fine but um but i also kind of have a little bit of compassion for the people that are just not aware of those things for sure because it's like like i grew up in an environment like i was raised by a single mom like she is incredible and she just knows how to get her shit done yeah um, do I know how she does it? No, absolutely not. Um, she's just kind of an enigma, but, um, it's my mother, but, mm-hmm. um, Thank you, Mom. she's been able to just like make it through and through with four kids, with a business, with all these different things. And so you look at her and you're like, holy shit. Like, how do you do this? What's your mom's name? Her name's Lucy. Is Lucy going to listen to this? Oh God, I hope so. Lucy, thank Lucy, you so much. You did an Lucy, incredible job. Jana is incredible. If you, if you listen, if you're listening right here. She's looking at the camera. I phones. love you. Oh. <laughs> I love you, Lucy. <laughs> I love you, mama. <laughs> I was going to hit a button, but then I'm like. Oh, oh no. I don't, I don't know <laughs> if that's the right button. I oh, no. That's let's, okay. Let's it doesn't have right. to be the right one. I was one. going for. Oh, see, that's what I was worried about. That would have been terrible. That would have been terrible. Thank you for not doing that. Oh, there you go. That's, right. that's the one we needed. You yeah, know, you know who I'm talking about, Lucy. God bless that woman. <laughs> she's a phenomenal human being, but the way that she's made it has been very, like, just cut and dry. Like, she just makes it happen. Single parents. <sighs> I mean, damn, yes. right? Man or God woman. God fucking bless that woman. Mm-hmm. She Four kids. Four kids. All of us have been close in age. Uh, my incredible. older sister is 32. Yeah. Uh, 33 maybe. Oh, sorry, Jessica. Um, I am 30. Uh, my brother is 27. And my little sister, who's graduating from college this year, is um, 22. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's like... Easy, but my sister's an e-, e emergency medicine doctor, so she's physician. Um, I'm a therapist uh, with, of course, my lovely husband. Um, and uh, my brother is in his last year of pharmacy school. Nice. So she raises well. She's got some good eggs. She, yeah, yeah <laughs> no, she. We we fought our tails off to get to where we are, uh, thanks to her. But um, at the same time, it's like, okay, also, I have no fucking idea (laughs) about how to create a budget to where I can be very comfortable and feel very good and at the same time be able to save a way for, of course, our future. Yeah. In my mind, I didn't grow up with that, like, being a thing. Like, of course, we always grew up with having a future, but as far as financially mindedness it's like okay like just get through it just get through it just get through it that's Mm -hmm. that's what i grew up around my mother's been incredible like an incredible human like it just she's been an incredible like vision in my life and she's guided me through a lot of different things and at the same time like from my standpoint where i've grown up what i've been through through my childhood i don't know that specific thing so like it's really hard because like I want to have compassion for the people that don't know what this looks like because yeah. I myself didn't even know what it looks like. Yeah. Like I've had wonderful guidance from very amazing people in my life, right. father-in-law included, Andrew, like other people. Um, but it's, 
it's difficult. It's difficult to be in that situation to just be like, okay, shit, like I don't know beyond a certain point. And the right. conspiracy theorist in me doesn't thinks that you know not teaching personal finance in public school. I right. yeah. Uh, the the conspiracy theorist in me doesn't think that's that's an accident. Yeah. No, I'm I'm with you, and I try mm-hmm. so hard not to do that, but sure. I yeah. agree with you 100. percent And I maybe it was George Carlin. <laughs> talking about that George Carlin mm-hmm. George Carlin is the best but we we and I kind of I, I just flat out said it earlier like we're educating our children to work in sure. factories which mm-hmm. you know that yeah. sounds kind of ridiculous and cliche but no but I it's mean, not it's, it's something that was brought up by I don't know George Carlin or somebody else mm-hmm. uh wicked intelligent but it does seem like that well a lot of people don't realize this but but um it, the the public school system the reason why it, you have grades a b c whatever it's it's because farming your your eggs and your meat were rated mm. a b c quite literally Holy shit public school was designed to create farm i mean that you, you say <laughs> when what you're saying is actually factually true i mean and no one is denying this yeah. like that's that what what we were realizing is the way that public school systems were set up however long ago just that system isn't working for modern day mm. um and and just we just the school system you know because of just all of the red tape and bureaucratic overload, the government hasn't been able to make the changes that are necessary to keep up with the changes in society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There really ought, there really needs to be in public schools, personal finance classes and mental health classes. Yeah. At least at least start normalize a shit. You know what I mean? Start with mental health. Mm -hmm. Start with that. That's where you, I remember seeing this little girl like, gosh, this was a, a year, year and a half ago or so. But I started seeing this little girl and she had such a a distorted experience, like a distorted idea of what therapy was about. Mm, and it's like, this no, is one of your clients? Or? Yeah. Oh, not current. Yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. mean, this was somebody that I saw in the past, but it just really opened my eyes to the reality of like younger generations, the people that are surrounding us, like people who are continuing to grow in this environment they don't see therapy as a normalized experience of oh. like being able to talk about what's going on through your week and organizing your thoughts and figuring out therapy. what do I want to do? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but people have associated therapy with being crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and I that's hate what, that fucking sentiment. That's what damaged people do. Right. Mm. I hate that sentiment so bad. <sighs> Cause I see my clients and I'm just like, no, that is not the thing. Like yeah. it is, this does not mean that you're crazy. Like what the fuck? is crazy anyways nobody's mm. normal let's just get honest about that no one exciting anyway let's just own no the fact that none no of us interested. are fucking normal no, let's just really nobody really. W- worth hanging out with is normal. no no one is normal normal is just a setting on a fucking dryer <laughs> <laughs> that was good well that thank good. you I had to. That's that's awesome. Should I do like a like a queen wave <laughs> yeah, or something? Yeah. Okay, whatever. Um, but it's but that doesn't exist. Yeah. Normal doesn't exist. Oh. So I I see these young little girls that I see and it, and they have this perception of like what they're supposed to be in mm. our environment, and it's like no, right. like no, that's not real. That's mm-hmm. that's created by social media avenues. That's created by Twitter fucking handles, yeah. amongst other things. <laughs> like you look at an Instagram photo, and it's like, oh my god, they have the perfect life. No, it is not perfect. People are flawed as fuck. Yeah. Let's get honest about it. Like it's it's not even it's not anything that is associated with where you need to be. Yeah. Period. Right. If, if period. I think to to the to the extent of what you're describing, I think the most damaging word for developing people is the word should. And Absolutely. Let me use the restroom real quick, and I'll explain why that. <laughs> ah, oh, I need to use the restroom too. <laughs> okay. Well, while y'all are gone, I'll just I'm talk sorry. to people about sloths. I, uh, you, you know, childhood is rough on everybody. It is. But Kids I are can't, fucking ruthless. I can't imagine. They're very honest, but they're very yeah, ruthless. Being a 13 year old girl has yes. got to be the worst thing on the mm. planet, right? I mean, don't. Okay, so it's it's not the worst thing on the planet, actually. Um, How about hardest? It's, it's difficult to a certain degrees yeah. because when you're growing up and you're trying to figure out who you are, like it feels very uncomfortable to begin with. Yeah. And when you have populations of different um, groups, different personalities kind of coming together, 
they start to create this like standard yeah a bar that you have to meet mean girls yes absolutely (laughs) when i was in elementary school oh my gosh like i was i i was not the cool kid period i don't Um, believe i was very i was very she was definitely the cool i was no i I really was not realize she was the cool no i really wasn't like i i was just very honest like my mom kept me very like honest and just genuine with myself but the girls that I was surrounded by, like, like think about it. it. They're all Hispanic. Like, we were all predominantly Hispanic. However, there was a level of segregation with, like, skin color. Mm-hmm. And I was a, a nice light brown, and I, I, I was very proud of it. But the other girls that were the popular ones had light skin or, like, bright eyes or um, colored eyes or whatever. Mm -hmm. So immediately they became the popular girls. And so it's very interesting to look back at some of those ideas. And, like, even as a child when I wasn't really aware of just, like, that correlation or just what created separateness between people – that I would look at these moments and I'm like, oh my goodness, like that's so, that's kind of appalling in a weird yeah. way because unfortunately, like depending on the area where you live in, depending on the whatever, like there's some sort of hierarchy that becomes to be created. It's just human, right? I mean, it's it, very, it, it's very human. It doesn't human. matter where absolutely, what time, like 1800s, absolutely. 1900s, 2000s, yes. you're going to see that absolutely shake out like yeah. that. And if I were to look back at some of the girls that I used to be, like, quote, unquote, friends with or not friends with or whatever. They're all listening right now, too. Yeah. Okay. Just so you know, I know where you're at. Um, (laughs) But a lot of them are just, like, either still there or either, like, having had kids or whatever. Um, Some of them have created wonderful careers, which I'm so excited for them for. Um, but we've all gone into such different directions. There was a time, weirdly enough, like a couple of years ago where a lot of my elementary school friends started adding me Hmm. on Facebook. They wanted to sell you Advocare. I was, I was so (laughs) confused. I was confused, but in a weird way, I was kind of like embarrassed or like I felt shame. Like I was like, well, what if they look at me and they think that like, I'm not cool or whatever. The fact that I even thought that I was like, oof. I need to to look at that probably. Um, And I'm still friends with a lot of them on Facebook, which I'm very very happy for. Like I like to see their lives and how they've evolved. And And now you've got like a lifetime supply of advocate. Yeah, right. Um, No, I don't have any of that. But um, (laughs) I just go to Ulta. It's okay. There you go. Um, But I look back at these people that I've known through elementary school when we were children. And it's so wonderful to see like how far they've come Mm -hmm. and I'm so happy for them. And at the same time, I'm also like kind of like aware, like, like I'm just like opened up to the reality of some things look a certain way, but as you grow up, you get to determine what you want to have in your life, what, what you want your life to look like. How strange is it that we hold on to high school for so long? Yes. Because I, I, I feel mm-hmm. like, and I think this is more just me as a person, mm-hmm. I finally got over that. But I think yeah. people hold that shit. In, mm-hmm. Yeah. I think people hold that shit until the day they die. Mm-hmm. Because I I don't, I know from my personal feelings that I've always thought about like, you know, what this person would think about me or, you know, a handful of different ideas that all kind of keep me tethered to that time frame. Sure, sure. And then I hear other people make comments like she just did. Like, man, you spend a lot of time thinking about high school. That's Mm kind of weird to me. But I do it too. And the older I get, the less it's like that. But my formative adulthood years, I really spent a lot of time worrying about you know, if if this if this is where I should be in respect to what happened back then, I guess I don't know. Does that kind of make sense? Makes perfect sense. I, I I joke with all of my patients that we spend the rest of our lives fixing whatever happened to us in childhood, <laughs> and I define childhood as zero to eighteen. So so what what happens is you know we we have these experiences, and then we develop a pattern of behavior to adjust to that experience, uh-huh. and even when that experience is taken away the pattern of behavior is still there. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the most common example that I like to use is a, a lot of, uh, you know, freshmen in college, they'll, they'll drink to 
as social lubricant to try to meet people. Yeah. And once they're out of college, keep you know, drinking. They, they, they still <laughs> they still use that pattern of behavior, even though that's not really needed anymore. Yeah. Even though that doesn't really fit where they are in life at at, at the given moment. And I mean, I'm not talking about uh, people who are 22 doing what they were doing when they were 18. I'm talking about people who are like 50 doing what they were doing when they were 18. Yeah. So so. You know, we, we do develop patterns of behavior that were required for some reason at some point in time. And even if the reason is gone, that pattern of behavior is still there. But, that, you know, the, the thing that I, well, before I, uh, uh, before I stepped away for a moment, I mentioned that I think the most damaging word to... Yes, and I wanted to get back to that. I'm so sorry. No, dude, it's fine. Um, so, so it's very interesting. The word, there are three words that I uh, tell my ther- uh, patients to, to dis- discontinue using, and those yeah. being should, must, and need. And I remember in... Uh, I need to write that down. Should, <laughs> must, and need. Well, I remember the, the in grad school, they told us to tell our patients that they're wasting their time masturbating and shooting all over themselves. <laughs> that's, <laughs> oh my God, that's great. That, that's why I remember the should and the must part. But, but <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> words like should, must, and need trigger, believe it or not, they trigger a survival response, whether huh. you realize it or not. Words, ca- and I might have mentioned this last time, but just to, <laughs> to, 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 to summarize it again, words carry emotional value. Words are really just random sounds that, that mean something. There are certain words where if I say them, it would elicit an emotion. Right. Um, so we know that words carry an EV, an emotional value. So words like should, must, and need you know, you you need to drink water, you need to eat, you need to sleep. Well, what happens when we say things like, I need to work out today, I need to go to the grocery store? You don't realize it, but you're actually telling your brain, if I don't go do this thing, something horrible is going to happen. Yeah. So as far as where, why the word should specifically is so damaging, there was a really great philosophy, one of my favorite philosophies called the tyranny of the shoulds. <laughs> okay. Now, the tyranny of the shoulds was a philosophy coined by someone named Karen Horney, H-O-R-N-E-Y, uh, and she was a big, big, big critic of Sigmund Freud. Okay. Um, there were a lot of those. There were a lot of those. <laughs> and as somebody who actually, uh, you know, criticized me, like as someone who agrees with a lot of the fundamental tenets of what Freud was trying to get at, right, right. I also agree with Horney's uh, cri- criticisms of yeah. him. Now, one of the things, this was back in the 30s, but one of the things that uh, Freud said is the reason women experience hysteria what is the fuck? because they're not doing, <laughs> because... I walked in the wrong time. <laughs> the, 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 Hi. The reason... So What's up? The re- Welcome back. The, 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 <laughs> Hello, thank you. The reason women experience hysteria, the, wow, you're you're going to... You're <laughs> out of context about you what I'm about to say. In. Oh, <laughs> no, you did not, so, so, honey. So let me, let me, let me like <laughs> say what I need to say before you Let's jump Back in. it up a little. Okay, yeah. go on. So, so um, the idea was that the reason women experience hysteria, which hysteria back then is the term we use now for mental illness. Right. Uh, what, what they meant by hysteria then is what we describe as mental illness now. Mm-hmm. But what Freud said was the reason women experience hysteria is because they're not doing what they should be doing. That being cooking, cleaning, bearing children and staying at home. Calm down, Jenna. It's okay. So, so <laughs> Hornai had, had give, give him a minute. We're almost there. Hornai had, had <laughs> perhaps uh, appropriately clapped back and said, no, women aren't hysterical because we're not doing what we should do. Mm. We're his- Hysterical because we're being treated as second-class citizens. Yes! And, <laughs> okay, sorry. And l- looking back, knowing what we know now about just the fundamentals of human of the human condition, it, it, it passes the smell test. Mm-hmm. When a human being is treated in very restrictive in ways that promote powerlessness, there's going to be problems. Male, right. female, cross-culturally, right. whatever. We've got a bunch of good examples for that, but go on. So, so the moral <laughs> of the story is Karen Horn and I rightfully pointed out that when people say you should do this, you should do that, where that is, where that expectation is coming from is some arbitrary, uh, well, expectation just derived from someone somewhere. But what you should or should not do, I should be married by 30. I should be, uh, mm. I should have a career. I should be making mm-hmm. six figures. I should be this. I should be that. If you break it down and you ask yourself, says who? You know, people will say, well, my parents or society or that's mm-hmm. what's normal. But at the end of the day, A, like we were talking about a moment ago, there really is no normal. Um, B, if you live your life uh, by what you think you should do, you will you will never actually be satisfied with what you're doing because you're trying to subscribe to some, some arbitrary entity's expectations that you sure. can't really even define. Sure. 
So I, I encourage everybody, don't say what you should do. Say what you want to do. Say what's mm-hmm. healthy. Say what's productive. Mm-hmm. But eliminate the word should from your vernacular and replace it with want. It would mm-hmm. be healthy if. Exactly. I want to. Exactly. Okay. You I know what? That. that is so great. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm coming up with all sorts of great tattoo ideas today. Oh, oh sure. good for well, you. I mean, they're your ideas, but I might put them on my so, body. Hey, go for also, it. Also, <laughs> on another note, my mother called me right now. Whoa. Two minutes ago. Oh, That's when we were talking about I'm it. I'm going to call her. Uh-oh. Wait. Hey, you can Wi-Fi to this thing and we can put it can on the Wi-Fi? podcast. Yeah. Hey, mama. Hi, muy bien. It's picking uh, I'm in a. I'm I'm uh, doing an interview right now, Mama. Do you want to say okay, hi? Bueno, no. Do you want to say hi? No, 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 no. I just want to be sure you're okay. No, no, no. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm, okay. I'm sorry. We've been busy today, but uh, we're okay. doing a podcast right now. Do you want to say hi to everybody? Mm, just say hi. Everybody. Just say hi. Say hola, hola a todos. Hola a todos. Hello, everyone. Oh, hello, everyone. Yeah. Well, I was just, uh, mommy, <laughs> mommy, I was just talking about you right now in the podcast because I was oh, telling, okay. I was talking about how you're a single mom and you raised all four of us really, really well. She fights for us and she, oh, what's up, baby? doesn't matter you were guilty or not i always fight for you <laughs> isn't even, she amazing even when you're acting up probably yeah even when i'm being bad she knows when I, she, she knows she knows when i've been bad she, she knows like when that. i've been bad my my mom knows she that she doesn't want to answer that she doesn't want to uh, give you any kind of <laughs> negative oh, reinforcement oh. do you want to say anything else okay, mommy mom. I'm 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 in the middle I'm in the middle of recording. Do you do you want to say something for everybody? Oh my god, no, 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 no. <laughs> yes, mom. No, 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 no. I was just talking about how you how you did such a good job like with telling us how, where to go and how and how to achieve our dreams. So, so mommy, as as a single mommy of four really successful kids, what what uh what advice do you have for everybody? <laughs> Oh Diles, mama. It's, it's been so hard being a single mother. Uh-huh. But, but I need to, if I need to be a star again, right over again, I can start with no problem. Mm. So you you live life on life's terms, huh? <laughs> yeah. I, I cannot change my kids for nobody else. Mm. God, isn't she amazing? It's a blessing for me be, be you, mom. <laughs> oh, mommy. And I'm proud for you guys. Aww. Very proud. Isn't she amazing? That's awesome. Yeah. Isn't she amazing? She is amazing. And this we need woman. her on the show yes. right now. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm serious. No, my mother learned how to drive in Houston, Texas at the age of 15 years old. Jesus Christ. No, this woman has, she's been a hustler. It was probably standard She's too, been a hustler it? all This was her not life. an automatic car. This was no, a standard. Mommy, mommy, what car did you drive when you first started driving? Did they have a stick? I was a Grand Prix, one, seven, mm. uh, uh, 1976. 1976 what? 1976 Grand Prix. Uh, it doesn't exist anymore. Grand Prix. That was it doesn't exist. Of course not. Ooh. Was it stick shift or was it was it the other way? Is it, is it what? Was it stick shift? Was it manual? Nice. Yeah, most of the cars, Isn't this if not all of them, are amazing. I'm telling you. She we worked for a newspaper show. in Houston, Texas, Houston Chronicle. Really? I mean, how long did you live at, uh, did, how long did you work at Houston Chronicle? Like 14 years. 14 years. Nice. Were you liked by everybody there? <laughs> yeah. Were you fed often? <laughs> what? No, yeah, like I'm people, like she, told me, she tells me stories where she was so small that like everyone would feed her just to see her gain weight. But like she just, she was just eating. Yeah. She was just eating That food. makes sense because you're super thin as well. So the genes come Family's family, got the, got the right? metabolism going yeah. for you. Yeah. Well, well me, me and Andrew and my friend Andrew, who's also his name is Andrew, uh, I was telling them about how you raised us and you did so, so good with just raising us and making us feel really good about ourselves. And 
reaching for the stars. So I just wanted to ask what, what you would recommend for everybody. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard because there's not any book to be a good father. Just you learn. But then yeah. with the time, with the kids, yeah, you learn. Yeah. Uh, yeah? yeah. No, well, I, I know. know. I, I, I love my job. Mom and, uh, mom and dad, right? Mom and dad. Well, I just want to make a, 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 a good, uh, be a good mom. I don't want to be a good dad. <laughs> good mom is enough for me. Yeah. Okay, mommy. Okay, well, I'll call you in a little bit, okay? Okay, I'm going to charge you for that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> send, send the invoice. <laughs> okay, All right, bye, mommy. I love you. Love you. <laughs> Awesome. So I don't want to uh, deviate too far away because I know that you'd mentioned that you had some uh, comments about what we were talking about a moment ago. Oh God, it's already gone. But well, oh, I'm so sorry. It's, no, no, it's because my, it's so because great. of Lucy, it's right? That, that this Lucy always, lady. Something that has always been fascinating is so so there was how Jana was brought up and there was how I was brought up and um, you know I've I have one sibling. Jana has three. All you know, um, I think it would be a. I, I think kind of what you're saying is, by and large, it was it was kind of just your mom that raised the four mm -hmm. of you, and everybody had to face adversity, mm -hmm. and still everybody came out on top. Mm -hmm. What's very very interesting is, you know, my my parents are are still married, and, yeah. and I have a sibling, and um, I have to be very careful about what I say here because she's not well, um, but. Um, it's just very interesting that one parent in the face of adversity can raise four kids that all of them turn out spectacularly. Meanwhile, you have two kids that, for all intents and purposes, were raised in a relatively safe environment. Yeah. More relative, not just safe, but, but an environment where there were also opportunities that perhaps other people didn't quite have. Mm. Absolutely. And it's very interesting because me and my, excuse me, my sibling and me turned out completely opposite of one another completely opposite yeah i mean uh, without going into too much detail i uh, i haven't talked to my sister in several years mm, my man. none of us really even know where she is Damn. um she just really um just just things did not turn out though i think the way that she was hoping i think the way that any of us were hoping yeah and so it's always been extremely fascinating to me that you know, here's you know, my sister and I had absolutely no excuses for not turning out at least okay. Yeah, yeah. Whereas Jana's family, with all due respect, had every excuse to have you know have things wrong here and there, but but you know they they all excelled and and yeah. so I've, it's always fascinated me how it's like the more adversity you're able to overcome, the more successful you are. Yeah. Meanwhile, right. the less adversity you actually have as a child, uh, the less likely you are to be successful as an adult. Right. Yeah, it's uh, oh, it's I, something that comes up a lot in some other podcasts yeah. that I listen to, but you you soft times create soft people or mm -hmm. something yeah. like that. It, I it, know that it works in an order too. It's hard times create, create hard, hard men. people yeah. and hard men create soft situations that and, I mean, hard situations <laughs> create hard men hard Hold men on, create like, let me, soft let me, times soft times create also, soft also let me interject yeah, I, real quick you, like let me interject and there's like, a lot of psychology supporting that yeah, cycle yeah, yeah. Too. okay it's let me just jump true. in real quick though from a female perspective like i mean i feel like it's not to say that nobody gets to go through adversity like even people who have it easy still have their adversity but it's how they handle those situations mm -hmm. like 100 i look at my experience with my mom like who you just listened to oh, isn't she beautiful i though? love lucy god <laughs> lucy that's not that's not just, just, a TV just show. Gorgeous. it's not just a tv show she's just amazing like she's she's a bad fucking bitch <laughs> like for real to bad bitches yeah to bad bitches get in here line line <laughs> chingonas okay but the the way that I learned to be a jefa chingona myself okay was I'm, I'm working on my spanish but jefa chingona like like a like it's like a bad bitch, but like a bad boss bitch. Okay. Yeah. I didn't hear it's, jefe in there. I know jefe. Jefe, jefe is like boss, <laughs> but like jefe chingona, chingona is like a bad bitch. You mm. know. So um, <laughs> here we go. You should have worn your chingona shirt. I know. Oh, God. Next, time. Next, next time. next time. Yeah, mm. next time. It's a good shirt. This mm. is gonna be a good thing. We're we're gonna. It do is this. a great shirt. Yeah. But um, <laughs> the reason I have learned the way that I have is because. 
my mom did not like this is something that i very much appreciate her about her um is that she didn't she wasn't about pretenses so yeah. like when we were going through really difficult times she ensured that we knew like that it was it, it was a very different time but she did not let us be in that situation of like we don't have xyz yeah you know what i mean so she allowed us to know like you know what you're gonna go through really hard times and we're gonna have to figure this out no. and we're gonna figure it out together because that's the only way we're gonna do it and so that's like a lot of times that's how we made it because like my mom worked her tail off she has a multiple different um professions that she's engaged herself into so yeah. she's a cna amongst other things she's also a cosmetologist she's also an anesthesiologist, like or an anesthesiologist, um esthetician um uh plus uh she's a business owner she is somebody that does a lot of like um experiences with like uh, collaborating with people because yeah. of course like i mean she used to own a laundromat so like um now she's turning it in office buildings which is fucking amazing that's awesome. that's and she's awesome. renting them out and it's god fucking bless that woman that's amazing she has an opportunity entrepreneurial brain yeah she and like and it reminds me so much of andrew because andrew is very like uh business minded so it's like if he sees an opportunity he just like <laughs> He immediately soaks it up. He sits on it. He thinks about it. He like puts a couple ideas here and then he puts it in action. My mother no. is the exact same way. You know, the best thing about Lucy at, 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 from what you're describing and yes. as, as I'm, t as I'm taking the information, the Absolutely. best thing about Lucy is that she didn't have to do any of that. She could have just, no, no, she thrown her hands up. But the, but, but the instead, reality is, is that my biological father set a fire in her and so she was like if i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it on my own mm -hmm. and i'm gonna make sure he she's she owned a business for a total of 27 years is that while she was running the paper no she it was after she left the paper oh okay in houston oh, wow. so she moved to south texas okay. with us um when i was three um but she started the business of the laundromat and the convenience store and amongst other things now, when you say Houston and then move to South Texas, <laughs> that, that hurts my brain. It's one of those, what did we call that? Double bind. Double, yes. It's a double bind for me. Yes. Uh, moved moved to, from, from Central South to South South. Oh, yeah, okay. to South South. <laughs> but like my mother has a personality and she has a wit to boot. Like she is just so approachable, so, so thoughtful. Like she's just really somebody that you want to be friends with, like you meet her and she will be friends with you in in the line that we're waiting for to get our burger. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like she will be friends with anybody. Awesome. It's very interesting because her mom and my father are, are very, I mean, they're the same people yes. just really? with completely different backgrounds yes. and yeah. experiences, mm -hmm. but it's remarkable. My mother had nothing and she created this idea I mean, and she just like, pushed yeah she's a pusher like she is like if i have an idea i'm gonna push it to fruition and i'll see what happens sign me up for the lucy fan club dude yes <laughs> everybody should be a part of the lucy fan club just saying and and I, i'm a big 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 believer that to be mm. the kind of person that can be an entrepreneur mm -hmm. it, it, it requires you to be a certain kind of thinker specifically yeah. what's called a dynamic thinker but that's i won't get into that part mm. I, I think we should we can. Oh, well, we, we can, can. Uh, to some point. To um, some point. Okay, the but long, the short of a dynamic <laughs> thinker is that their brain I, has is, is able to make connections that the uh, typical brain cannot. Yes. Yeah. Um. So so find find patterns and and things that other people don't see patterns in. But um, oh shit, where was it going with that? Uh, with mom and doing her. Uh, oh, so so uh, one thing, people who are able to be entrepreneurs. I'm a big. The, believer that if, if, if you are built that way, if you're not doing that, if you are the kind of person that can be an entrepreneur and you're not, it drives you nuts. You are going to have depression and anxiety. Yes. In the same way that if you're a musician, yes. if you're, if your brain is, if you are the kind of yes. person that can produce music and mm -hmm. you're not doing that, mm -hmm. you're going to have a bad time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there are certain things, I mean, we have a number of patients where both of us, we, we see what the problem is. They're working for someone else. Someone else is telling them what to think and what to do. They're smart enough to know that those things don't work for them, 
but they're not yet brave enough to branch off and do things on their own because society has kind of told them to sacrifice freedom for security. I am 100% living all of that right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Here well, we go. Uh, We're here. We need to turn this into a therapy session. <laughs> I told my friend, Excuses I was like, I'm going to see my therap- <laughs> therapist. <laughs> no, but I will just say this, just, just to support what you're saying. Um, yeah. I had my own business for three and a half years. Sure. And, um, it got to be too much. Shut mm. it down. Went and got myself an hourly job. And then through a series of weird events... I ended up in Austin uh, as, as a manager in a salaried position, whatever. But like you're saying, and I'm fine with it. It's not mm. that I'm super anxious about it or whatever, but I do sure. feel it. You know, I totally. I, Absolutely. There's so many things that I, I just, I need to be like, we got to do it like this. Right. I understand. Yeah. I get it. I know this is your business, whatever, but, uh, you know. Yes. <laughs> um, no, you're. So. And, I, and I, I like that, like, I, I like the n- nonverbal experience right there because it's like, yes, all of that, yes. Dude, it's, it's hard, though. It's it hard. Is, it's it super is. difficult. It is. And, and it, it does drive one nuts. But, totally. you know, it is what it is. And you also have to be very grateful for a position like what I've got. Sure, sure. Because whenever everything went to shit and I decided to close down the business for multiple reasons, mm-hmm. somewhere along the way, I, I was... I was I was granted this opportunity to work for this company. So I, I check my bullshit every time that comes up. Like this is not your business. You sure. you, you can Good. handle it as if it were your business until the one that really owns it steps in and says, We're not gonna do it that way. Yeah. Then you have to default. Right. And, and 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 so one of the reasons they brought me along, I think, is because they know from experience watching me and having worked with me in the past that I'm going to treat your business as if it was mine. Mm. Sure. And that's that's something you're going to deliver. You can't buy that. Mm. You cannot find people like that Absolutely that don't not. exist. Yeah. And I think you have to find somebody in my exact weird circumstance. Ran my own business, did pretty good, shut it all down because it wasn't for me, mm-hmm. and now I'm an hourly guy. I mean, I'm salaried, but you know, I'm working for somebody else. Yeah. But, but that's not the focus. It's it's about like being able to do the job as effectively as you can and. And following what feels really good to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I feel like to do work, like, and me and, oh, hi, Luigi. Did I off rail you? I was trying hi, to compliment Luigi. your story, and I feel like I just oh, stole the whole I'm thing. Sorry. No, not at all. I know, dude. Oh. What, what you were saying is totally, I mean, yeah. I, I. Hi, Luigi. I, I do like to remind, yeah, um, I, I do like to, uh, I do want to highlight that, that, you know, Hawk isn't. Yeah, it's Janet yes. in our first business yes. venture, but it mm-hmm. isn't my first business venture. And I've actually right. had a number of failures leading up to this. You have to. You have yes. to. Yes, absolutely. And you I, have I, to take a chance. I you tell, have to take a risk. You have to fail. And I tell, Absolutely, like a I, relationship. And I tell, <laughs> I, well, I tell people, well, and to that end, I tell people there are a certain number of things you can get wrong an infinite number of times as long as you get it right once. Yeah. Um, and I also say that the people with the most failures and the best successes tend mm. to be the same people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, if you, if you were the kind of person where the, your very first shot at running a business, it's totally successful and it takes off, like, to me, that's very atypical. I don't think it's possible, is it? I mean, there might be a few I'm stories sure out people, there. Yeah. I, I, I think it's more <laughs> unlikely than it is likely. The best stories are like you're talking about. Absolute horrible, beautiful failures. Beautiful that, failures. Yeah, but spectacular, you know what? spectacular if you think, failures. If you think about it. That cost like, a let lot me just, of money to Let learn. me just put it out there. But like all of the, your biggest failures, the ones that you really, really remembered, has that led you to... A higher level of self. Yeah, that's Think the, about it. That's the, the it has absolutely. And so because we ha- we have to go through really discomfort and uncomfortable moments in our lives and our growing to be able to get to the really really yummy stuff. And I feel like I'm finally starting to move in the right direction. Wonderful. I don't have all the answers. I'm not Wonderful. a perfect person, but I feel like the the shit I went through in the past five years has mm. pushed me into the melting pot. Are we? Are we? Ugh. High five, <laughs> and, and that that goes back to kind of what we were saying a few minutes ago, which is just Absolutely. the unfortunate reality that yeah. you have to experience meaningful adversity ah. to gain meaningful. And it's not the uh, what is what did you call it? Like the unfortunate, what well, unfortunate what? Huh? Uh, you mentioned something earlier. Are you talking about the hard men? No, 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 no. Well, like he was like, oh, the unfortunate experience of having to go through adversity. It's like, nah, it's not unfortunate it's actually like 
Yes. But it's unfortunate I'm that that's how you. I'm going through discomfort. That's how you gain this that. This is where it's going to take me. Yeah. And we were kind of talking about this, I think, during our last yes. podcast. Even, even, um, and I, I, I'm pretty sure I mentioned this last time, that even your immune system, if oh, it, yeah. if it isn't talk. fighting For something, real. it will start fighting itself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Autoimmune disorders is when your immune system is too strong. I'm bored. Let's weak. fuck some shit up. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Well, everybody, Chaos. every <laughs> one, one thing in nature is everything needs a dragon to slay. Yeah. Ooh. And if there isn't, if there isn't one, it, it, it'll, it'll just one. boomerang onto yeah. itself mm-hmm. and that's that's the unfortunate re- i mean we talk a lot about having i mean we're, we'll have kids one day and it's like it sucks to know that we have to let our kid like experience pain and struggle it, because the of absence of those things is what makes soft and ineffectual yeah. people who will struggle even greater later on down the line so it's that. it's something we, in we the process soft kids. yeah no 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 it's something in the process like we're not trying to be light about it it's because like especially coming from our own experiences like we definitely want to raise a well-rounded human being but you know what will that be perfect absolutely fucking not it might turn out to be a little jeffrey Dahmer. that's okay you gotta you love know him what? Anyway. i think as I long think as we don't will. i think he's t- based I, like, on i'm what, very emotional like i think he's gonna get based on what we've learned about me. serial killers as long as we don't aggressively physically yes. abuse our kids <laughs> yes. for an extended no. period and of time we don't should be okay don't expose him to opportunities to kill animals or oh, yeah. or humans right. or whatever like it's you know, I, I'm sure we will be a okay, but like at the same time, like we want to ensure that we are, are in a really good space with ourselves internally, because like that is ultimately what you need to create a, a foundational point of like the happiest life. You guys are in tune with your shit. This kid is going to grow oh. up walking in water. <laughs> it's it's going to be great. God, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be wonderful. Jeffrey, uh, the uh, the thing about animals and, and sure, all yeah. that <laughs> made me think of a uh, um, an acquaintance of mine mm. that was just telling me what cornholing is. Have oh, you, oh we actually have a cornhole thing. Nope, nope, it's not that. He's a hunter, right? Oh. Shoots a buffalo. Buffaloes weigh 2,000 pounds. Sure. Can you pick up 2,000 pounds mm. and walk it out over uneven terrain? Um, not by myself, I don't think. No. I've, I, admittedly, I've never tried. Part of the process is you got to you gotta get the weight down. You gotta get, okay. So you remove oh. some of the stuff Through so the, that it's a little lighter. I got you. So cornholing, you cut around the butthole. I see uh huh. With a really sharp knife, you gotta be careful. You don't want to nick anything. Sure. Well, everything from your butthole to your mouth is a big sock, mm-hmm. and you just pull it all out. Whole and that's thing. and that's called cornhole. Cornholing. Yeah. Oh well, I I, I I was not familiar with that definition of cornholing. So she's talking about you know being mean to animals or whatever. I'm like, I bet you know little five year old uh, Jeffrey Dahmer might have seen something like that. <laughs> Or or performed something like that. Or or perform something like that. Let me say hello to our Ariel. Let's shut this down. Okay. Let's go ahead. Um, hi. Well, uh, thanks for being on the show. Well, thank you for for, for <laughs> certainly having us. Thank you. This was enjoyable, and hopefully we can continue doing a at least a once a month kind of. Yeah, that'd be sweet. Kind of yes, something like this. That would okay, be so lovely. folks. Thank friends you. showed up. We got to go. We yes. went two and a half hours. Oh damn. Bye. And uh, we'll see you next time. All right. Another big thank you to Andrew and Jana Green of Hawk Therapy. You can find their material at hawktherapyatx.com. And it'll be in the show notes, so you can look at that there. Um, Thank you all for being here. Uh, It's always a pleasure to have Andrew and Jana on, and we're going to have them on very soon again. So look forward to that. Hope you all are having a wonderful day. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.